And we're recording. We are recording indeed. Right. Three, two, one. Good morning and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. As always, I am your co-host Callum and thankfully, as always, with me is uh, your other co-host Scott. Hello, how are we doing? I'm very well. How are you doing, man? You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh, full of caffeine, full of sugar and ready to go, man. <laughs> Excellent. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Glad to hear it. You've been, you was a bit of a... You'd be a teenager, wouldn't you, last night? You oh, went back yeah. to your youth. Bit, bit of a late night last night. <laughs> late, night late night, early morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah certainly. I say early morning, it's not quite... Seven o'clock is a well, lay-in. you had a lay-in, yeah. yeah I seven guess. o'clock is yeah. a lay-in nowadays. Early uh, for the rest of us, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, exactly, yeah. For the rest of us that actually <laughs> go out to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Inverted commas. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I like that, yeah. But yeah, so otherwise... Uh, yeah, mate, I'm... Uh, I've, 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 I've enjoyed getting into this one. Yeah, it's um, it's it's been a, f- a fun one. I, I didn't really know where it was going to take me, and I, I thought I w- it was going to be very much the kind of um, the the sort of the academic, you know, route. It was going to mm. be very much like you know, these are the sightings, this is the origin, blah blah blah, and then just kind of you know discussing that. But you know, as always with these cryptids, you end up finding a little thread and. The more you pull it, the more yeah. shit unravels. And you know, I, I you know, I think we've both ended up going down paths that I don't think either of us necessarily, uh, you know, expected. Um, mm. And I, I, I like this one in particular because there's a lot of actual conspiracy theories as to potential origins and, and oh, causes. Yeah. And I, I mean, they are only theories, so I've not done a deep dive into any of them. But hopefully, I'm offering enough for nut. Offering up enough just to put the teeth in, <laughs> just to, um, yeah, just to, uh, yeah, kind of paint a picture, really, if, mm. um, you know, if nothing else. So, uh, yeah, but no, it's been, um, yeah, it's, it's been fun. I mean, I think we've both been working up to the wire, haven't we, on uh, sort of the research and <laughs> yeah, stories. Before and I head out, headed out, I was still on there looking at websites and, and stuff. <laughs> yeah. it was like- I was having to write on a, on a little post it note some, uh, Sort of details that were remembered from our um, oh, from listener our, story. Uh, we have of course, a yeah, we've got a listener. Story, we have a listener we? encounter, which is um, yeah, it's a really good one. So um, yeah, so I, I was even quickly scrambling, the, you know, some extra sort of details on that uh, this morning. So yeah, as you say, it's been um, a fun one, and hopefully that uh, that certainly uh, translates. And um, as ever with these cryptids that we you know jump into, it's it's possibly or it has thrown up a, a couple of. Um, linked uh cryptids yeah. that we could uh quite easily jump into on you know oh, the next sort of couple of episodes absolutely um, i mean was it constantly I've, thrown up i've different... even got one that, that throws in uh, the big man himself the big guy turns up does the big he guy turns wow up. okay so cool on the on the wee island of puerto rico yeah um so yeah absolutely it's uh it'll be a good one hopefully I hope so. <laughs> but um look before we get into any of that we've got our uh obligatory shout outs that we uh, that we like to um get done um firstly as always our beloved uh, patrons james justin and monika hopefully we're still saying that right yeah I'm <laughs> if sure you haven't told us so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we've got nothing to go on <laughs> so please correct us if uh, if we are wrong but uh, yeah thank you to to you guys um you know as always for the continued support it is uh, much appreciated um and as ever, guys, um, to all your other listeners, you too can be uh, a part of the supporters club, if you will. Um, and you can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash cryptid ramblers podcast. Um, and it's as easy as that. Easy. <laughs> We've got uh, simple. We have got two uh, tiers for you to pick from. Um, with you know various perks, depending on what it is you're, you know, you're looking for. Um, and I'm, so I'm sure we've got. Uh, Plenty of reasons for you to come and uh, support your favourite podcast. <laughs> if, if you don't already, then <laughs> yeah, yeah. put it in such a good way. I know. I am. Uh, I have a way with words, as you know. <laughs> we'll we'll be up for Tonys. So we'll uh... yeah, yeah, a wordsmith, if you will, <laughs> of sorts. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> I like to try and mix it up. I don't want to. Silver tongue is what they call it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Um, 
So, yeah, we, we can't continue with the uh, the shout-outs and the thank yous without mentioning the the home of Cryptid Ramblers podcast, the uh, the place where the magic happens, as I'm sure you'll all agree, <laughs> where we're uh, sitting right now, our new purpose-built studio here at Hellfire Studios. Um, it is based in Southend uh, in Essex, so roughly 45 minutes from London, and it's the first First podcast, film and photography studio here in Essex. Hellfire Studio offers full content creation. So visit hellfirecreative.com for more info on that. Um, And as always, for being a a listener, um, you too can benefit from our uh, sponsorship by receiving a 20% discount. Uh, Simply go to hellfirestudio.uk and use the code cryptid at the checkout. Um, Easy as that. Just for listening, get a bit of discount. Come see what the guys can do. Indeed. Because they can do a lot, <laughs> and we're only okay. benefiting from a very small part of it. <laughs> so much, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and as we uh, as we've mentioned, I think over the last couple of uh, episodes, we've um, we've now launched our uh, brand new merch store, um, which we are yeah very excited about. Oh, yeah, um, very proud of as well. You know, it's uh, you know we've teamed up with a, a local company. Um, this this part of the operation is under buy that merch um who are also a part of sos clothing um who is say, a local company to us uh, here in um in south end um we've we've dropped some new designs um mostly based on season one of the the podcast and we've also kept a couple of the uh, original designs that we had on the on the other store mm-hmm. um i'm beautifully modeling my favorite <laughs> it's a t-shirt don't worry yep. um, <laughs> yeah it's not your snapper pants <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're not today no, it's too cold for that um so uh, yeah so if you are uh, indeed interested then uh, please head over to buy that uk. go to uh, podcast merch on the uh, the toolbar and select uh, Cryptid Ramblers, because thankfully, by alphabetical order, <laughs> we are top. <laughs> yeah, <that's> awesome. <laughs> which, you, yeah, which is always good. Um, failing that, you can simply type in buythatmerch.co.uk forward slash Cryptid Ramblers, and it will take you straight to our section of the um, of the store. Um, you know, take a look at what we've uh, got on there um, in terms of the you know designs. Obviously, show an interest in anything that you like. <laughs> But subsequently, if you've got any ideas of what merch you'd like to see, a particular design, a logo, you know, an idea from something you've heard in, you know, the, the first season, then drop us a, a line. I'm sure we can um, sure we can sort something out. Yeah, indeed. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that, that, that does all the it does initial indeed. gubbins, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so we can jump, uh, jump straight into it. And... Uh, what is it we're jumping into? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've been talking for too long. I'm bringing you in. Mate, you got so awkward right there. I'm tagging you in. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. <laughs> we've uh, we've been looking into El Chupacabra. Indeed we have. Been, yeah. um, quite an eye-opening one, really. I didn't realise quite Hasn't how it? new the Chupacabra was as well. Um, Agreed, yeah, absolutely. I thought it was a long-standing legend and... It seems like it only goes back as well. The term chupacabra really came out in the in the mid nineties, but there's mm. been some weird stuff happening in um, yeah in has. and around that area. Um, yeah, no, you're right. For a long time, for like at least the, the mid seventies, um, maybe even sixties. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it, yeah, kind of one of the the two, I guess. Um, yeah, I suppose jumping into it, uh, for those that don't know, the uh, the the chupacabra or El Chupacabra is a legendary creature in the folklore of parts of the Americas. Basically, every uh, sort of island or you know country within the Americas have, have got their own sort of tales uh, or versions of. But the mm. the first reported um, was in Puerto Rico, um, as you rightly say, in ninety five. Um, uh, but Oh, you're not. You, have, you have to say it correctly. <laughs> oh, God. You have right, to go pronounce it correctly. <laughs> and we must consult the man that knows how the to expert. pronounce it correctly. Yeah, go on then. We're also praying for the people of Puerto Rico. <laughs> oh, God, so bad. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. 
<laughs> it's just so cringy. Puerto I'd rather say it wrong Rico. than. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather say it wrong than say it like that. I think. Um, oh the man! Oh, is not, the, the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm one for pronunciation where I can, but yeah, even there, yeah, I can get jaws the line. <laughs> he loves Puerto Ricans. That's the, he does. He apparently, them. he does. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the the the, the creature. Um, got its name from the reported uh, vampirism of uh, the way it killed, um, you know, its prey. Um, the name literally translates to goat sucker, basically. <laughs> so well. Make that of uh, your will. We've got, uh, got the <laughs> got the bell <laughs> in its, uh, in its d- dishevelled form yeah. <laughs> this morning. We'll have to get a new one. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the creature is said to attack and then drain the blood of livestock, um, also including goats, um, but any farmyard animal, basically, sheep, chickens, you know, the lot. Any, they, they any rule, of the livestock. Uh, they rule on the menu, yep. Um, now, physical descriptions of the creature, depending on where you look, um, are either dog-like um, or reptilian or even alien Um in nature, yeah, which was the thing that that surprised me when, uh, when sort of, um, yeah, well, when 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 looking into it. Yeah, I mean, I, um, this was that, that same for me as well, really, because um, I had it in my head that the chupacabra was like a dog-like thing, because that's that's pretty much yeah. what you see online. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm always following the various different cryptid videos mm. and, and other bits and pieces, and um, uh, there's channels like Slapped Ham. For instance, yeah, yeah. I like that one. Cracking. Great channel. Yeah. Oh, brilliant channel. But mm. he, he, you know, they they, they posted um, top five El Chupacabra sightings. Mm. Yeah. And they're all dogs. They're all dogs, yeah. I mean, that, that's, I mean, I'll come on to it a little bit more, you know, in a, you know, in a second. But basically, you've got two. like at the very least, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You've got two variations. You've basically got the. Uh, the Puerto Rican um, say it properly chupac- I'm not saying it properly I'm going to say it wrong damn it <laughs> um, you've got their version of the chupacabra which is very much down the the kind of the reptilian uh, route or the the Texan um, yes chupacabra which is the more dog like um, sort of version mm. um, but I'll, I'll come to that in a little bit more detail as I say um, uh, a bit later on Um now, as you rightly say, um, the first reported sighting of the, the creature known as Chupacabra was uh, towards, uh, I think, middle to late 95. Um, but reports have been claimed to actually have derived from Puerto Rico since the uh, 1970s. Um, so that that's when the creature itself, you know, would have been sighted on, mm. you know, sort of farmland and, and, and sort of roaming the, uh, the countryside. But at the time, no one really knew, you know, kind of what it was. It wasn't really believed. It was yeah. mostly just like a superstition or just, you know, a story that, you know, sort of farmers would tell. That's right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't until it sort of gained prominence, as you know, as you say, in, in the mid-90s that um, it became El Chupacabra, um, mm. basically. Um, but, also, of course, it doesn't, you know, stop there. Sightings have been claimed in the US, places like Maine, Texas, New England, um, and then as far afield as, as Russia, um, Philippines, Chile, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, like we said earlier, you know, the Americas, I've, in, I've all, found, in all its sort of guises. some account, so. accounts. I didn't go into too much detail about them. No, I didn't, no. The, it was more to do with um, the killings of the livestock, like the, mm. the MO. Yeah, it was, yeah. So that. the character descriptions didn't necessarily match up or they weren't mentioned because it was, the creature wasn't necessarily seen. Mm. But as you say, it left its, uh, its MO sort was of MO, so the way they were killed. I found some in India. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yep, some cropped up there as well. So yeah, all, all over the places we tend to find with these, you know, sort of cryptids and with that because it gains prominence in one area and then people start thinking they've seen it or whether they do actually migrate like every other animal does. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, but as I you mean, said, I've, I didn't. I've kind of got a theory. dive into that. I've got a kind of kind of a theory on on that in itself, which I'll, oh, okay, I'll come cool. on to obviously later yeah. on. Yeah, of cool, course. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's um, yeah, but um, yeah. As I say, almost all reports um, 
I generally disregard it as either lacking in evidence or uncorroborated. So it would just be one person has, has sort of said something. Mm. No one else was there to witness it. So people just kind of brush it off and yeah. think, oh, well, you know, it's just, you know, just you sort of thing. Um, but yeah, some that come from sort of, you know, Mexico uh, and, and parts of the US tend to put it down to just a, a normal dog or a wild dog um, mm. with mange. Basically, that that's kind of the the, the sort of the explanation. Um, it makes sense, really. I mean, with, especially when you see a lot of the videos and stuff. Yeah, of chupacabra sightings, or even when people have captured what they call a chupacabra. Yeah, um, I mean, but the, the only thing with that though, um, and this is why I think the um, that that's just a typical government cover up nonsense, mm. is that those specimens were tested. So they were captured and they were yeah. tested and the DNA didn't necessarily match it to any kind of known canine or other sort of wild animal. Mm. Um, and also there was no trace of mange on the skin. So they couldn't actually, because mange is for anyone that doesn't know, and I'm not a vet, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but <laughs> yeah. it's basically a, a tick. Yeah. A like mite. A mite. Yeah, exactly. Gets in that kind of gets in under the skin and yeah, and creates that kind of almost looks like psoriasis on, on the animals. Yeah, it creates like, like a real thick, heavy kind of... Thick black skin. On yeah, it, isn't it? yeah. And interesting, and the animals all showed that, which is instantly why people thought, well, it's just mange. But then mm. when they tested the skin, no no traces of either the mite or the, the infection. So they couldn't then mm. explain why the skin looked like that. It's basically just like a thick, black, leathery, uh, leathery skin, I suppose, yeah. without the presence of kind of the infection or mm, you know mites weird. or anything like that so yeah so that that's i think you could buy into that as a as a possible explanation if everything else stacked up yeah and they've taken they've sent it to uh was it the a, a uh, was it a&m university of texas or texas a&m university something something sounds like where, where they where they did the the testing and carried it out and i think one person may have sent it further afield as well to get like oh, a second like opinion on yeah yeah and well that's always the right way to go isn't it yeah getting independent if you go to a government funded <laughs> <laughs> yeah. medical lab mm. you, you know you're going to get a something tells me you're not going to get the full story yeah exactly um so they went to enough places from a, a number of the documentaries that, that i watched um and yeah it all came back inconclusive basically so mm. i don't i mean I, I don't believe that it's a, just dogs with mange anyway because even if you look at the animal that was captured it doesn't look like any known no, it dog. doesn't look right. It, but and, it, and it doesn't look right, as you said. Like the, the, I think they. W w one of the things, and again, we'll we'll come to it a bit later uh, as well. I think, but the, the the front teeth, the fangs, for example. You know, there were two. Well, the, the, I think the, they were the too short to be. Is what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. They were too like short to be a bobcat, but they were too big to be a domestic dog. They were kind of in a grey area that mm. no one could sort of pinpoint a particular you know kind of species that well, it would you know um, what it, it's, it's not completely unplausible because um the the killer bees that thing the you know in, yeah. the, in the 80s mm. there was this um they, they were swarming these killer bees and it's because mm. they were actually created in a lab yeah and they got out i mean you could ride those bloody things yeah. to i think they called them Afri <laughs> african killer bees i think is what they call yeah. them from, from you've got to blame someone haven't you you've got to blame a region for them <laughs> yeah. haven't you? So, yeah even though, no, even though they came out of south america <laughs> yeah you've got to blame africa yeah. i guess yeah. um but yeah so i remember that it was a similar sort of thing mm. they were actually created in a lab genetically modified yeah and like they were rather aggressive well I mean, they I mean, even did a film didn't they they did they, they did, did. The killer bees yeah I mean, and yeah, I mean that's a little kind of breadcrumb to a possible theory, yeah, as to where the, the chupacabra comes from. It could so add, um, potentially be one of those government yeah. experiments that escaped. Well, that went a bit wrong. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and we've got I've got a little bit of evidence that kind of supports that. So, but again, cracking. We'll come onto it uh, a bit a bit later. Um, but yeah, wildlife officials, as always, have just put it down to nothing more than an urban legend um, or that it's just a wild dog, you know, with mange. So they've, a bit like the, 
uh, Project Blue Book, everything was a soddy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was all I saw a ten foot giant. Yeah, it was just an owl. Just an owl, just mate. A big barn owl. That's all it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. just it just stank of that when I read it, and I thought, no, nah, I'm not buying it. Yeah, it's like, well, it's like <laughs> nope. the it's like the forest forestry agency going, oh, there's no there's not a problem here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's yeah. No problem. I don't know what you're talking about. It's all there, fine. There's yeah. no records of people disappearing. <laughs> yeah, there's exactly, no problem yeah. going on around here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, a little bit like that. So yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't buy into that. Yeah. And and yeah, I mean, you know already, but you'll know why I don't buy into that. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, you know, the, the further we, uh, we get into it. But um, as always, a little bit of um, etymology for you all. Um, so the name Chupacabra comes from Chupa, which is to suck, and Cabras, which is goats. <laughs> so just to, yeah. Goat just sucker. To, goat sucker. <laughs> Oh, I met a few chippers in my time, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's very true. One or two. Um, uh, but the actual name was coined in 95 by a, a Puerto Rican uh, comedian um, when he was talking about previous sightings on a, on a radio uh, show. Um, which I thought was... Because, you know, again, like before it was a, an author or, or journalist... Mm. Um, that you know, that sort of coined the term, and this time it's a you know a comedian. So I just quite like that. It's not always the science bods, you know, that that do it, or the person that had the first sighting that yeah. gives license to call it the name. It's just some <laughs> some yes. Puerto Rican comedian <laughs> just decided to call it a goat <laughs> bit sucker. tongue in cheek, yeah. called it goat sucker, and it it kind of everyone it jumped on it really. Yeah, and I then suppose it's kind if of you translate that into English. You go. Have you seen the Essex goat sucker? <laughs> hey, what are you talking about? What? Yeah, it's Pack a bit, it bit too literal. Yeah, but oh. uh, but yeah, no, I, I like it. That's where it's. Uh, yeah. You all right? Yeah, yeah. My headphones just um, oh. disconnected. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, because it's under my. There we go. You all right? Mean. Yes, we're back in business. Back in business. Cool. <laughs> I have to, I'll, I'll mind my feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that might have been me as well, actually, come to think of it. Um, so as, as I said before, sightings and accounts of the uh, Chupacabras uh, started in the mid-1970s, um, originated in a uh, small town of Mocha, Puerto Rico. Say it properly. <laughs> oh, no, that's the best you get in. Puerto Rico. <laughs> just under your breath as well. It's just weird. Yeah, you got to do it really breathy. <laughs> Um, Boy, and <laughs> right, stop it now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so Mocha, Puerto Rico, and uh, it was initially referred to as um, El Vampiro de Mocha, mm-hmm. the Vampire of Mocha. Basically, <laughs> I think we'd all figure that one out. Yep. Um, uh, and basically, a, a number of uh, livestock were found dead, um, but locals um, initially thought it was the workings of a satanic cult. Mm. Which I know again, you've got a little bit more info on oh, yeah. um, for later on. I keep dropping all these breadcrumbs, don't we? But <laughs> I promise we will get to it. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then and killings then spread across the island um, to you know sort of other other towns. Um, but the the one sort of commonality was that each animal was was reported to have been um, bled dry um, uh, and small um, incisions uh, were found. On typically on either the, the sort of the neck or the chest of the animal, mm. um, two s- circular uh, incisions, like puncture marks, puncture wounds, mm. exactly right. Yeah, um, so yeah, so that was kind of the a sort of a, a brief uh, origin. Um, the first reported attack uh, that was actually attributed to then what became the chupacabra occurred on. Uh, in March of, of 95, um, eight sheep were found dead uh, on a farm, um, each with uh, th- uh, three puncture wounds in its chest and completely drained of blood. Uh, a few months later, in August of 95, um, another witness claimed to have seen the creature um, after 150 farm animals were all killed. Um, and this occurred in uh, Canavanas, Puerto Rico. Uh, and was witnessed by um, Madeline Talentino, mm. which I know you got some info as, as well. I think yeah. we might have watched the same thing, but... Uh, Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and it was then at that point that the, the comedian um, Silverio Perez um, coined the term El Chubacabra. Mm. Um, after this report was um, essentially popularised, um, other similar um, animal attacks um, occurred 
also across uh, Puerto Rico, but also Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, the oh. Dominican Republic, basically the Americas. Um, yeah. But they're just to name a few. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it just it kind of caught, you know, the imaginations of, oh, yeah. you know, people worldwide, really. Um, but it kind of originated in, mm. in, in that part of the, the world. Well, the, 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 there's a big, big difference with the description of the Chupacabra that... Uh, Depended on where, where you Madeline find it. actually had, wasn't it? It yeah. was very, very different to what we've already spoken about with regards to being very much a, uh, like a canine-like creature. Well, yeah, I mean, th- this is the thing. So <laughs> if you, if you, you know, read the, you know, the, 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 the Puerto Rican um, descriptions. For the most part, it takes on a reptilian appearance with um, leathery or scaly sort of greenish grey skin mm-hmm. um, with uh, sharp spines or quills running down its back. Um, it's roughly three to four feet uh, tall, standing on uh, two legs, um, and it tends to move like a kangaroo apparently mm. is the is the kind of the hops or comparison yeah well that's that i think that's partly how it moves so fast because it does like a kind of a jump or a mm. sort of a hop and and i think because it's back legs they're they're longer than their front legs and so i think they take on the sort of the the shape of kangaroo legs basically yeah. which and that's obviously then how they move um the height does differ i know i mentioned there it was three to four feet but um I, i've read a, a couple of other accounts that pitch it in more around five feet mm. um you know in, in height there was um it going into and, a little bit of uh, pop culture uh with regards to this yeah um and it's it's general sort of description mm. it's, but certainly uh, it's shape at the very least yeah um there was a film that came out i believe in like the early 2000s it had adrian brody in it and it's called splice um Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. The idea was that, you know, they experiment experimenting to create yeah. some human-animal hybrid so that they could grow human organs yeah. for donation and, and, yeah. and stuff like this and transplants and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but this creature ended up being sentient, um, growing up to actually, you know, have thoughts and language and everything else like yeah. this and ended up just going a little bit schizo as it always does because it's yeah. a horror film. It's a horror movie, movie. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a similar sort of thing. Like it yeah. had those um, strong back legs yeah. that would make it hop about. So, mm. and from what I, I did look into it and the theory around El Chupacabra mm. from Puerto Rico inspired that film. Oh, right. Okay. So oh, that's interesting. Gene splicing. Again, that leads to a possible... Um, a possible theory. Mm. Um, but yeah, another common description, mostly in America, um, I mean, they even call it the, the Texas Chupacabra, uh, is that it looks like a strange breed of dog, um, mostly hairless with a uh, pronounced spinal ridge. Um, also, it has uh, pronounced eye sockets um, with uh, enlarged fangs and massive claws. Mm. Um, and again, I mean, we'll share... Um, few images on the the socials once this episode drops and yeah you can you see what um what people mean when they say you know it looks like a, a sort of a dog of a, a mangy canine yeah basically um so it, yeah it's and there's lots of there's lots of images of that but there's not any images at all of the puerto rican one which is incredibly different no no good ones um, you know, there's a few kind of kind photos of blurry, taken at night and they're blurry and at a distance and behind a bush or Bigfoot photos. You know, yeah, Bigfoot photos. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then there are plenty of accounts that all say, you know, the same thing. So in, mm. in lack of kind of physical evidence, you know, there are a lot of different, um, a lot of different stories that kind of help, you know, corroborate that, uh, you know, description, including, um, p- uh, political figures, um, mm. from uh, from uh, Puerto Rico, um, which I'll again I'll come on to. <clears throat> uh, but I just wanted to go through. Uh, I watched a, a couple of documentaries. Um, and I'm not sure if you saw the same ones, but they threw up a couple of um, uh, encounters, um, which are actually US based. So these are the the sort of the Texas Chupacabra. Um, this first one's quite a, a famous one because I've seen it pop up in sort of YouTube videos and, and sort of other documentaries. Um, this was in uh, 2007. 
I think I know the one you're talking in, about. In yeah. uh, Quero, Texas, mm-hmm. uh, Phyllis Canyon um, saw a creature on her ranch. She had quite a sort of expansive land. Um, she noticed that a lot of her chickens were being killed, but the bodies were being left behind. They were being drained of blood. Um, and she, what her first comment was, you know, we've got loads of predators in the area. They've got, you know, bobcats, coyotes. Yeah, um, plenty of them. Plenty of them in, in that particular area. Um, and what she noted was that they would normally kill the chickens, but then take them away to to certainly, eat and yeah, to devour cats. and whatever else. Yeah. Mm. Um, they would never be left behind. It would normally be like a pool of blood and some feathers, and, and that's all that would mm. be, you know, that kind of left uh, behind. Well, we have a, we do have similar sort of things that happen here. Um, yeah. Like, for instance, uh, the, the, the the urban fox, it actually likes getting into things, killing things, and then just leaving it behind. Um, yeah. Which is, uh, I used to... Rabbits and guinea pigs. Well, yeah, and, I used yeah. to keep chickens back in the day. <laughs> yeah, same, yeah. And, um, yeah, and uh, once we had a, a fox get in, mm. tear all the chickens apart, and just left them. Didn't eat them, just didn't take one of them. Playing nothing. a game. Just got in <laughs> just, there, just, yeah. tore them apart. The kill. And, yeah, just, and then left. <laughs> nice. Which is um, <laughs> just an interesting one. Well, the um, the interesting um, interesting thing with this is that the the sort the, the thorax of the the chickens had been kind of ripped open, and and they were completely drained of of blood. So there was no blood pools of blood, no blood splat. It didn't look like a like a you know a horror movie where there's yeah. just blood and feathers everywhere. They they would just almost as like they're just falling asleep or just drop dead. That's really weird, but completely drained of all, uh, of all, all uh, blood, um, which was uh, which is weird. Um, and again, and this was one of the ones that I referred to earlier, where they'd had um, uh, DNA uh, testing done. Uh, this was at the University of California, um, and it showed that it was basically a, an unknown creature. Um, yeah, they didn't know what it was. It didn't match any. The, the the DNA coding didn't match anything that would have been that either we know about or mm. that would be prominent in that particular area. It just it came back inconclusive. Yeah. Now this is something that's worth noting as well is that they would be able to figure out if it was a hybrid between two different creatures. So, like for instance, yeah. if it was like a domesticated dog and a coyote. Well, that, that was a theory. They would be able to figure out the DNA sequencing but, of the yeah. two and see the hybrid creature in between. They thought that it might have been like a, a coyote a bred with a bobcat or a bobcat with a domestic dog or something like that. So it was some hybrid. That was a theory. But again, as you <laughs> Com- say... Completely implausible, mind yeah. you. Well, that's, because it's like you, yeah. a feline can't mate with a, a canine. It's just cats and dogs literally yeah. don't mix like that, do they? That was one... That, that was one sort of theory, but that they kind of threw up. I yeah. think they were clutching at straws at this point because they were they like, must have been. DNA hasn't thrown anything up. <laughs> so it must be a hybrid of something. A cat and a dog. Cat and a dog. Well, I remember that car too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah that'd be it's a, a good weird one. looking creature to see that one. God, would it? Yeah. Cat dog. Well, this is a weird frigging creature. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that that was that, that seems to be one of the more famous ones from, from kind of that area. Yeah. Um, because like I say it's, it popped up sort of you know a couple of times. Mm. You, you know it was in a, a, a forty minute episode of a documentary, but that's really all that kind of that was compelling enough to kind of reiterate. You could have gone through the whole bloody episode, but um, oh, yeah, it just wasn't. It's not worth it. Um, now another one uh, occurred in Elmendorf, Texas, um, involved a chap named Devon McNally, um, and he kind of got rightly suspicious after losing around 130 chickens. Um, but he actually managed to shoot, kill and capture the creature that had been stalking his ranch. Um, now it was a small four legged canine, completely hairless. Uh, the skin was a gray color and looked, you know, mangy or as though it had a, a skin condition. Um, it also had lumps, um, or spots on its uh, skin. So I know if you go, cold and you get goosebumps oh, or like okay. chicken or you look at chicken yeah, skin it's yeah, got like those kind of chicken. little yeah kind of look like that um and yeah i mean it you know generally it didn't look particularly 
It didn't look particularly clever, despite the fact it'd been shot. <laughs> it didn't look in great condition anyway. Looked a bit dicky. Looked a bit dicky, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't look too clever, bless him. Yeah. But um, he, uh, he he kept the, the bones for future evidence. Um, and then the, the documentary brought in a cryptozoologist, um, Ken Gerhard. Um, again, I'm pretty sure I've seen pop up on... That name's for like Monster Quest and kind of all the others. I think he's uh, sort of a. I probably know his face if I kind of in that world. I think he's he's quite um, sort of well known. But he examined the bones and and right away he noticed the the fangs and obviously how pronounced they were. Um, And there were other abnormalities with the skull, um, including a pronounced ridge that ran sort of up the sort of up the middle. Oh yeah, which I presumably would then lead into the 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 supposed ridge down the spine, the sagittal wrist. That's it. Sagittal, Sagittal crest. crest. That was it. I couldn't think Sagittal of the word, but that's crest. that's it indeed. Yeah. yeah. Um, and <laughs> what was then great is that it then cut to this um, that, uh, Devon McNally's account. It then shot back to Phyllis Canyon, who then pulls the severed preserved head of a creature that she then found on her land. <laughs> she actually had it like stuffed and what? mounted you've got like taxidermy yeah living. proper like in a living room like displayed like a beloved pet or like what you'd see in a museum that's that's she had, weird she, she had it yeah she had it stuffed, that, you say, stuffed that, and mounted you say that, that, that's something that crops up a bit like I, I was my beloved dog that was 20 years old when it died which, now it's standing in the corner <laughs> and now it's a, a draft excluder at <laughs> the front door or, <laughs> yeah. or props the door open a big like. paperweight or something you know, like, that's weird yeah. that's really well, weird this was on a this was on a decorative table in her living room like almost like centre stage <laughs> and it, she'd had it sort of um, here's my prize head <laughs> exactly. well it, 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 the rest of it was like the rest of it, I, I, the, the rest of it was there eventually, but initially you just saw the head, <laughs> but then you got reattached to the rest of it, <laughs> and she had it kind of like positioned, like oh, it was posing. posing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It, mate, it was weird. <laughs> oh, it taxidermy's weird anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's yeah. odd. Like, yeah, I, I get that the, the appeal of animal skins and 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 such leather and and everything. Mm. But to decorate your house in dead animals, I think it's it's a bit strange. A bit macabre. Yeah. Yeah. It's Not, a little bit strange. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Says the man with bird skulls in his house. And <laughs> yes, yeah. So I'm sure you must have something in your fucking house somewhere. Um, but then <laughs> who's better to uh, declare the weirdness other than myself? Exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. You've got <laughs> free license on that one, I suppose. <laughs> um, now, just following off of... Um, off of that story, there was another one um, in uh, Pollock, Texas. Excuse um, me. I know exactly. How to, that's why I <laughs> emphasised the I, per. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Pollock in Texas. <laughs> um, you with that mouth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. In uh, in 2005, Ben Quinn had an encounter with uh, a mysterious uh, creature, um, but he again was able to um, shoot and, and kill the the creature. Um, after his son um, tried to capture it under their house. Um, so basically, they'd, they'd heard it scampering around their land. Mm. And it's one of those American houses where it's kind of like built on stilts. Got well, not stilts, but you've got like a crawl space, yeah, got a crawl under, space underneath. underneath. Yeah. Um, and it, it basically it shot under there, basically slap bang under the middle of the, the house. So <laughs> like any good dad would... He sent his son in after it. Go on, boy. <laughs> Go on, boy. Yeah. You're going to learn today, boy. <laughs> Time to become a man. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go under there and get that monster. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Exactly that. Um, he, uh, yeah. So the, the, the son goes, goes under there and um, he's got a, nothing but a flashlight and he's, he's kind of wow. he, keeping the flashlight on it. They do like a recreation and he's crawling through and the closer he gets, the, the son's like, I didn't know whether I wanted to get any closer because it didn't look like anything that I'd seen before. And, you know, it wasn't like a dog or a coat or anything like that. Um, and basically, the closer he was getting, the further away the, the, the animal was getting from him. Yeah. And I, th- I, th- up. I think he tried to sort of grab at it and, and sort of, you know, pull it, but... It wasn't having any of it. Um, I can't remember if it if it was tr- it tried to attack him or not. But basically, the dad, like any hero, <laughs> was standing on the outside with his rifle, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like laying on his belly, 
a- aiming down the crawl space with the gun pointed at the creature. So if it did go a bit hairy, well, then he could Well, at least the gun weren't it. pointed right up his son's arse. Well, yeah, I mean, that, w- that would be, yeah, that would be a mistake, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, so, yeah, so the, the yeah, son had... Um, nice and deep, boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the um, <laughs> the son uh, tried to capture it under the house and, um, yeah, but had no joy, so the dad shot it and then they dragged it Ask out. questions later. Exactly, yeah, yeah exactly that. Um and they came up with the same sort of description that they believed it was a cross between a dog and a, a kangaroo based on the, the, the because kangaroo. of the legs. Wow. Like I said earlier, the, the back legs were obviously longer than the front. And I think that's how it sort of moves so fast and he's able to kind of jump. Well, that's a new one the, Com- the hind like compared legs. to like the, the regular like American. Regular, regular dog ones. Encounters. Yeah, I mentioned it. Earlier, I can't remember. Oh no, no, with, you, um, with the Puerto Rican one, it was that. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. not with that. Yeah, no, not with that one. There was that idea that it hopped along like very <clears> much <throat> like a kangaroo. Yes, yeah. that's, that's the first one that I've heard from the American links that links that. Sorry, yeah, I see what you mean now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so it shares the same hind legs in terms of how sort of much longer they are. Uh, again, it was hairless, um, mangy looking, with sort of rough, you know, leathery skin, um, and also the. The uh, pronounced uh, huge sort of uh, fangs um, gotcha. at, the, at the front. So again, another you know another kind of um, you know link. Um, so that again, as you rightly say, it, it sort of it creates that first link to you know what people um, you know reported to see in uh, in uh, Puerto Rico. Um, another one which I thought was quite uh, quite good it happened in as recently as uh, twenty seventeen. Yeah, um, August of uh, of that year in uh, Abilene, Texas. Um, Adam Thompson, um, an animal protection expert, um, basically sets up uh, wildlife tracking cameras on his ranch after seeing you know various creatures. Um, and I think because you know it was a prominent area, he he set the cameras up as as well. Um, I don't recall that he'd lost any um, sort of livestock. Um, so this was more of a sort of preventative uh, mm. measure. Um, he he checks the footage periodically um, for you know really what types of animals um, pass through his land. So that's, that was why he, was, he set up the cameras. It was gotcha. more of a research purposes. Yeah, the m- migration of various different creatures yeah. and such. Yeah, what comes onto his land? Uh, you know, what times of the year? How frequently? That kind of thing. Um, he does this for a two month period and and spots nothing kind of out of the ordinary. Makes a note of kind of what he sees. Uh, it's mostly bobcats and coyotes, which is what you'd expect. Yeah, regular sort of um, tree animals. So yes, yeah, so this was. Um, Started in August, um, then in October of the same year, um, his uh, camera picked something up. Um, it is a creature with, again, longer hind legs um, than a dog or, or a, a coyote. Um, and it has um, strange markings. Or The, the camera picks up the, the uh, back end of it. So gotcha. it, the backs of its legs and you start to see sort of its back as it walks past and, and round in front of the, the camera. So it has strange markings, uh, sort of like a, I saw it as uh, uh, the coloration of the fur mm. as opposed to markings. So the, the, the coloration of its fur was sort of different in, in kind of like patches. Um, and it looked to have the spines running um, down its back from the, the base of its neck, um, basically gotcha. to sort of where the, the tail would be. Um and yeah, the, the 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 back end was covered in in fur, but it looked slightly um, balder at the, the the sort of the front end. Um, it was a wildlife camera, so the the picture uh, or the footage wasn't mm. you know great. But from what he and you, you actually see it on the documentary, cool. Um, so uh, yeah, so I thought that was um, so that was quite cool. Um, so yes, yeah, so we've got the. So would like what sort of, just just to get a little bit more info on that. What, how yeah. would you describe the the, the coloration of the fur? Then was it like spotted, striped, or or anything? Kind like of spotted, that? almost like a hyena. If you've ever seen like a in a zoo or, yeah. or either. so you've you've got the it was it was dark fur, but then there were some patches that were darker sort of than others. So yeah, literally just sort of spots almost. Yeah, gotcha. as you say. So it had you had like a general colour which I'd say was a, a sort of a it looked grey mm. but then there were like these little spots or, or splodges of, of black fur 
gotcha. um, up its up its sort of hind legs and and then sort of over its back. The grey definitely matches the description yeah. that you you tend yeah. to get with it. Is that there's like some sort of exactly. dark grey, grey, green you know, sort a, of a colour. shade of grey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it was moving away from the camera, so you couldn't really see. You saw kind of pointed ears, mm. but then between that and the sort of the hind quarter, you couldn't really see much else of the animal. Because I say it was walking away from. Uh, the, the camera but yeah it looked like it was spotted I guess gotcha would be the the better sort of thing um, so yeah so I guess yeah so in 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 summary I guess we've got the Puerto Rican um, description which is more you know reptilian with the spines on its back um, and then the Texas chupacabra which is more dog-like um, although as we've just discussed there are even similarities between you know kind of the two um, mostly being in the the hind legs um, now, in cryptozoology, it would normally be defined as two separate cryptids um, because of the descriptions of the creature varying sort of greatly, mm. except for maybe that one similarity in the, the hind legs um, that has popped up in, you know, only a, a, maybe a handful of, uh, of accounts. Um, however, the behaviours of the two are far too similar which is why they let they basically allow there to be two versions um when you when you're discussing yeah, gotcha, it so, yeah. so normally they'd say right well the El chupacabra is what is is on puerto rico the texans have got have got their own thing sort of thing yeah. and that's what they would normally try and do differentiate enough that they can create two different cryptids but the yeah the, the but- behaviors in the way they kill their prey mm. um a, a, a sort of far too similar. So on this occasion, it's from what I read, they've actually allowed there to be the, yeah. the two versions. So it wouldn't be like um, like the uh, North Americans have got Bigfoot and Sasquatch, mm. Himalayans have got Yeti. Yeti, yeah. You know, the, the Europeans have got Woodwows or Wild Men. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's so. what they would have tried to have done had there not been too many similarities. If there was enough of a difference, then yeah, they would have... Because the, obviously the, the actual descriptions of the creatures are very different, but... Like you say, yeah. the behaviours, the behaviours are circumstances too. surrounding yeah. the animal killings are bang on. Yeah, they are bang on, and because they don't, because those behaviours don't link to any other, um, to any other known animal, mm. they they can't associate it with anything else. The, these two versions of this cryptid or this creature are, you know, of one in itself. So mm. that's why they've, you know, they've allowed it to be. Yeah, you've, yes, yeah, so you've basically got El Chupacabra from Puerto Rico and you've got um, just uh, the, the Texas Chupacabra, gotcha. basically. But then that then spans outside of Texas as well. So you could call it the American Chupacabra, I guess. Yeah, that's you know, what makes if sense, you want to get, it, really? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, now, it was quite um, interesting. At the back end of one of the documentaries, they then started going into... Um, Quite briefly, um, the fact that the um, chupacabra is now sort of adapted to craving human flesh, so not just attacking oh. livestock. Um, there was a couple that popped up, but I only wanted to mention sort of the first known one, which happened in El Naranjo in Honduras uh, on February 13th, 2019. You know what? These chupacabra sightings and, and animal attacks... Mm. That's, 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 that's more, the thing that's linking them all was the animal mm, attacks. Yeah, they're coming up to becoming like, more recent. Last month, yeah, it was like one of the last ones that I saw that came. I think that was out of um, El Salvador or something like that. Yeah, possibly. Um, yeah, it was just it, they are something's happening. Yeah, something's going on something's in these areas. Happening. Yeah, definitely. Um, so with, with this one on Honduras, uh, a day labourer um, was basically found dead with his body completely drained of uh, blood. Um, the next day, w- witnesses claimed that a dog-like creature emerged from a hole in the ground and sank its teeth into his foot, then proceeded to drain him of every last drop of blood. But they only decided to <laughs> mention this the day after. They didn't help him. No, <laughs> Try and pull him away. Hang on, what's going on over there? What's going on with him over there? Oh, he's just oh. been drained of blood. Anyway, right. back to work. Yeah, crack on, lads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Underlay, yeah. underlay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, exactly, yeah. So th- th- I found that, you know, sort of funny. But again, they were, you know, they were quite um, uh, kind of serious, you know, in their conviction. They were like, you know, like, 
this happened. Yeah. It's like, well, why didn't you help him then? Like, he was still alive when you watched it happen. <laughs> And then uh, you were surprised to find him dead was, the next day. Why like, was he passed out though, or some like this? I don't know. I don't know. He just he it, off his head, or you know, he had a, had a pretty good night, or whatever. It was just a, a, a day labourer just going about his 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 work out in sort of. It just looked like the the, the desert yeah. land. In, yeah, so he's basically just a day labourer. He was he was out working, doing whatever, um, and yeah, a dog like creature emerged from a, a hole in the ground beneath him proceeded to sink its teeth into his foot and then just drained him of every last drop of blood, you know, that he had. He collapsed to the floor. The dog presumably fucked off and they, no and one they did anything with the work. <laughs> until the next day <laughs> when he when his body was found. And they're like, oh, yeah, um, yeah, I saw, I saw some, some creature, like, attacking him, and but I, I thought nothing of it. I he just, didn't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just thought I'd just let, him, let him die. Yeah, like thought, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought I'd let him die. It's yeah. Like, he's he had a road to build. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's it, part yeah. of the Monday club over there laying down. Going to leave him to it. Yeah, it was... Um, oh, that's that's a weird one, though. That it was weird. And it, I only mentioned it because it was the first mention of any human attacks. See, up until this point, it had all been farm animals and just like chickens and shit. And I thought, oh, well. Which in itself, if you look at it, if you link, if you do link that with the animal ones, mm. there's not there's no sign of struggle and stuff. No, no, no struggle, no injuries, no kind of lacerations like, or other cuts or anything. Was, why, why was he lying down to begin with? Mm. Why did he not react if something did come along and bite his foot and mm. start draining him of, of, draining yeah. him of blood? It, I mean, yeah, that is what we would consider textbook vampire yeah. MO. You know, it's almost exactly, like putting yeah. the, the victim into the hypnagogic, hypnagogic state yeah. where they're pretty much paralysed. Well, as I say, do, do they carry a sort of venom, venom similar to snakes whereby, you know, the moment like they... A neurotoxin. Yeah, the moment they sink their, their teeth, you're, you're paralysed or, you know, so he was awake, but, you know, sort of paralysed. And maybe was he just, maybe he was just laying down and no one thought nothing of it. Maybe until they... A bit too much moonshine. Yeah, yeah exactly. Until they <laughs> saw the puncture wounds or they... So, because yeah. an interesting thing that crops up is, um, which I think I do go over um, in a couple of other stories, um, but one other sort of thing that links everything, mm. um, all these animal killings, is that um, rigor mortis doesn't set in. So the the, 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 the carcasses or the, the the bodies of these animals, um, and presumably this um, this chap from Honduras doesn't get to the point of rigor mortis so that they're still as kind of flexible and as kind of limp as though they were still alive that's weird. that that must be some sort of chemical so there's no like I'm, I'm stiffening no, i'm no i'm no, I'm no surgeon or whatever or i don't know or what chemist causes. or anything like that but th there must be some sort of uh, chemical reaction to stop it's something that happens in the draining of the blood that prevents um that prevents the uh, rigor mortis because when the people find all these chickens and all their animals like kind of dead, they're mm. able to pick them up and they're just sort of limp and you they know could flexible be as though they were still alive, but obviously they're yeah. clearly not. It uh, could be a biological aspect to it, like for mm. instance, like an anticoagulant mm. sort of thing to stop the blood from clotting or something like that. Then has a bio. Well, they don't have any blood, of, do they? So I don't know whether well, it's the blood that causes the rigor mortis and because they're devoid of blood. Yeah. And it's yeah, not the blood yeah, isn't feeding the, the joints. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not going to even try and figure it out. <laughs> I'm not smart enough. Screw that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I thought that was, um, yeah, I don't know why that popped into my head. But yeah, that, that was one thing that kind of links, you know, everything. Mm. Is that, yeah. That's odd. And, and this is even um, 12 hours after the animals have been found, like their bodies have been found. It still hasn't set in. And it would have done by that point yeah, in, oh, normal, in normal yeah. circumstances. I know that much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not sort of right away, but no. relatively soon, you know, after. That's all. Um, yeah, which is, yeah, which is bizarre. Um, another one that I wanted to mention, just because it involves actual officials. So okay. I think it kind yeah, of adds some, I mean, there's two I've got cropping up, but um, this one um, in particular uh, it was in Dayton, Texas, um, in November of uh, 2010. Um, Bethany Ward, um, a veterinary technician, um, is riding her horse 
on her ranch. Uh, I think she's got a daughter with her, and they find a dead creature on the side of uh, the road, sort mm. of going through her her land. Her horses were um, so spooked they wouldn't go any further down the road. They were just like, nah, I'm staying here, thanks. <laughs> so she had to dismount the horse and go, you know go and investigate. Um, she she couldn't identify the animal from her years of extensive experience of obviously being a vet. So nothing mm. came to mind, even to her, as to what this thing, um, you know, could have been. So she went back to her home, um, uh, grabbed her husband, who was a livestock inspector and Texas Animal Health Commission member. <laughs> So he should real, real he should have officials. a good he should have a go yeah and this is what I mean so she took him along um, to see it he couldn't identify it either so they arranged to meet a game warden um, at the site of the, the the carcass the next day when they arrived two men in hazmat suits were spraying a foam over the site which basically suppresses the spread of contagious diseases oh <laughs> um, and. The game warden wouldn't tell her who they were, um, you know, why they were there, what they were doing, and he also wouldn't release any of the info from the findings of what it was she'd found. Proper cover up. That's job. proper cover up job. Yeah, <laughs> hazmat suits spraying like a foam, which basically just suppresses. It. Yeah, basically just suppresses the spread of any contagious disease. They were specific with you know, kind of mentioning that. That's um, which yeah. um, you know, and this was only. What eleven years ago, something like that on on her land as well, and they just yeah. Well, <laughs> can't get oh, off the fence we'll just, just yet, but no, <laughs> not gonna, not gonna, not yet. But um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's interesting, um, yeah. you know for sure. Um, now. I feel like I've been talking for a long time, a long time, but I've got, um, yeah, go for it, man. So whatever you've got, these are, these are just some kind of general, uh, sort of encounters and, and, and stories, which, uh, I decided to take from, you know, various documentaries that, um, that I watched over the last few nights. And yeah. these were the more, you know, sort of compelling, especially that last one with the fact that there's actual like health officials couldn't identify this thing. And then suddenly they've got guys in hazmat suits spraying stuff and so I thought that was like you got to mention that yeah um, but I also came across a number of uh, theories and this is what I was saying earlier about the you know the sort of the conspiracy theory element yeah, yeah, to this yeah. not just it being kind of natural in, you know in terms of just a creature that's yet to be identified um, you know there are some cool uh, yeah some cool sort of theories Um now, one of them um, takes place in uh, Ciba, Puerto Rico. Say um, it properly. No, stop it. <laughs> Say it properly. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing it, damn it. <laughs> okay, you're tempted, though. Aren't you? I am tempted, but on, I'm not going to. No, Just try I'm not going to. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to make me do it. You don't have to buy it, but you can just try it. <laughs> No, because I'll make a hash of it and I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll embarrass myself. Um, so, uh, yeah, so what we're... Do, what do you think we've been doing for over a year? Yeah, <laughs> making, but that's, Making that's, a hash of it and embarrassing ourselves. Oh, yeah, but this would be deliberate. <laughs> the rest of it's unintentional. <laughs> There's a difference. There's a fine line. <laughs> but good try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, so we're... Yeah, so Ciba, um, Puerto Rico, and th President Roosevelt... Um, actually commissioned the construction of a naval base um, on this particular part of the island um, in 1941. Um, he had, so this, so this was during the sort of the outbreak of the Second World War. He'd actually been there for a visit during the First World War because they were looking for places within the Caribbean to build their military bases. Forward operating base sort of thing. Yeah. Um, he'd gone back following his initial visit basically just fell in love with the place, he said like the terrain was, was perfect, the land was great for what they needed. Mm. But a lot of the government officials at the time were just like, well, no, why do you, what do you want to build one there for? Like, 
it, it just didn't make sense to them. And they didn't think that their warfare was going to take them to that part of the, the world, maybe. So they just gotcha. kind of poo-pooed it. But then oh, the opportunity um, came up um, during the Second World War. And so he went back and, yeah, commissioned the construction of this uh, this naval base. Um, it was in May of 1941, Um that it was completed and aptly named Roosevelt Roads Naval Station. And uh, they basically pumped like $50 million into its development cool. at this point. So it was a serious, a serious, serious place. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's had many uses over the years, but it was predominantly used for bomb testing after the breakout of World War II. Um, and... It was also a. Uh, it was also the site of a docking station for submarines. Uh, so people believe that the pollution and waste spilled on the land as part of the testing caused uh, genetic mutations in local wildlife, which thus created what we now know as the chupacabra. So the Godzilla effect. Basically, yeah. exactly that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and also, there would have been a lot of. Um, presumably nuclear waste material um, dumped from the docking station or um, sort of leaked from, you know, the submarines Mm. so that they, so there could even be sea creatures, people believe in that area that have been mutated much like, you know, land animals. So we could be looking at what started off as, you know, coyotes, but through this kind of pollution of, Mm. Well, various that, materials that's that certainly plausible because mm. um with the uh nuclear power plant in fukushima when excuse me <laughs> fukushima bless you <laughs> i'll pick your part <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> the um they they found blinky the mm. fish didn't they yes Blinky the fish out of the, the Simpsons that yeah. predicted it <laughs> the, the, like 20, 30 years beforehand. The three-eyed fish or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and they actually found a three-eyed found fish one, yeah. in the river that um, the power plant actually sits on. Yeah. And it had the nuclear leak. So, yeah. Well, exactly the same sort of thing. Although I don't believe anything has been actually found and identified, um, aside from the, the chupacabra, mm. which obviously land-based, they believe that if it's created this on the land, then because of the... The sub docking station. Was it that nuclear, there's a good chance? Was it nuclear bomb testing, or was it just explosives? Just, just in general, do you know? I th- I've got a feeling that it was nuclear bombs, mm. um, but they obviously they were quite careful with how they worded it. But from the various articles, it did seem to point in that mostly because of the mention of like the pollution, the waste spill, um, the fact that the the site can be um, couldn't be used for a number of years after it was initially closed down. That sounds nuclear. Because it's, it? yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. So they didn't come out and say that it was a nuclear testing facility from what I could find, mm. but there was enough, it was kind of cutely worded in a number of these like articles that yeah. kind of led me to, which is why I've made a note of it. Because I thought, well, if you've got nuclear testing, nuclear waste, you know, well, there's genetic no real, mutations. There's no, real, there's no real telling what nuclear power has done. Um, or well, we kind of understand a little bit as to what it does in this sort of world, yeah. in this sort of material world. Yeah, um, exactly. But there's um, no real telling what it does in other dimensions, say. Well, no, exactly right, yeah, because it's a material that we can't even, you know, touch for, you know, because it will infect reasons. us and, you know, eventually, you know, sort of kill us. We don't know, as you rightly say, what effect it would have on, you know, entities or creatures from other planets, other, you know, dimensions. Mm. So if, if we unknowingly created this genetic kind of hybrid from something that we didn't even know was in our dimension. I, I know it sounds a bit far-fetched. A bit fantastical and far-fetched, but that's what we're here Fucking for. Hell. I'll believe anything <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. absolutely. Um, uh, another one, um, just uh, to quickly go into. Yeah, go for it. Um, the and I'm sure people will know of this, but basically the world's first and only deliberate radio message was sent from the um, Arecibo radio telescope on November 16th, 1974. Um, it contained very basic information about the human race in the form of binary code. Um, it was made up of over 1,600 ones and zeros. Mm. Um, they didn't expect a response and weren't disappointed because officially 
they never got one. Mm. That's Arecibo, that's the um, the one in Goldeneye, isn't it? I, I was just going to say, for those that don't know, it's yeah. the big, um, it's the yeah the the big radio uh, satellite dish looking thing built into the uh, ground, which I actually found from this is a natural sinkhole. Oh really? Yeah, and they decided to build it in a natural sinkhole. Yeah, so yeah, so if anyone's seen Goldeneye, the Bond film, um, when he when Alex Trevelyan drops from the um, the antenna, yeah, down to the base of the uh, satellite, that's basically um, Arecibo or Arecibo. Sorry, Arecibo. Um, So yes, they they didn't um, expect a response and weren't disappointed when they didn't get one. However, many. Many believe that um, extraterrestrials did, in fact, respond by sending UFOs to Puerto Rico um, and that some of the occupants of said UFOs were, in fact, the Chupacabra. And that's how yeah. they... Um, that's something that, that I That's how they well. came onto There's our planet. Like they, they were kind of inadvertently introduced. Yes. Because um, uh, another thing, uh, another part of this theory is that part of the coded message... Um, contained our DNA strand. So basically like the coding to our DNA. Um, and they believe that the UFOs came to basically infiltrate us to get a hold of our, mm. you know, DNA. That's, which um, then leads into other theories about people, you know, mating with aliens to create hybrids and oh, all this yeah. gubbing. So, I mean, I didn't, <laughs> you'll be glad to know I didn't go into that. <laughs> I've left that for another day. Yeah. But Yeah, that's another episode that, altogether. Yeah, oh, Christ, is it? Yeah. So that that kind of, um, that seeps into mm. into that. That is, um, that is um, actually a, a theory that comes up quite a lot with regards to some sort of alien invasion that, mm. um, that we've been seeded. Um, different things. So, like for instance, the, the Roswell crash was seeding technology that would yeah. ultimately separate us f- from nature and spirit. Because right. Okay. That's basically what technology is doing. Um, yeah. Whether it's on a, an actual biological level, with all the you know wavelengths and and radio waves and everything else like that that could actually interfere, but it's actually the the psychological aspect of it as well. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense, man. I mean, nowadays, I wouldn't be surprised if there was an alien invasion. Well, exactly. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it hasn't already happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is why a lot of the stupid shit's happening at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need, we need to be sorted out. Yeah, don't we just? Um, so that that kind of leads into uh, another one, which, I'll, again, I've not gone into, because, again, it can be a, a separate, you know, kind of episode in itself when we, you know, start to tackle, you know, UFOs. Um, but basically, in El, El Junca... Puerto Rico, um, otherwise known as the Anvil, um, in 1984, um, a UFO oh, the, was... The rainforest, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the mountain range and, yeah, yeah uh, gotcha. rainforest, yeah. Um, a UFO is uh, hovering above the, the jungle um, before crashing into the side of the mountain. Um, before government officials could clean up the area, locals were able to take a look at the crash site. Apparently, creatures that looked like the Chupacabra were found dead at the site. Um, however, not all were killed on impact, and that is how they were released into the ecosystem of Puerto Rico. That's is what weird. they, yeah, is what they. Uh, Are they suggesting believe. That, that, that they were piloting the UFO, either piloting or um, another theory, um, which I kind of read somewhere else, partly my own. So a bit of creative license, yeah, <laughs> um, but as uh, as everyone probably knows in 1961 the soviet union sent two dogs to space in a in a shuttle to basically see whether um space flight would be um safe for for humans to do so to go up into space and to come back safely um and so it is kind of i say widely believed it's, it's, it's believed um that aliens basically did the same and that the chupacabra is basically the alien dog and so the UFO gotcha. had Chupacabra in it yeah. with the intention of basically like flying into our atmosphere, turning around, flying back, so they could then see whether it was safe for them to that makes sense. basically come and visit Earth. What they weren't banking on was the fact that that UFO crashed and the Chupacabra were... They got out. ...were then released into the wilderness and then became a part of the Puerto Rican uh, ecosystem. So it's it's plausible. 
It is plausible. It is. Um, but the interesting thing, and I know you'll mention Invasive this. species and all that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I finally give you a chance to talk. <laughs> you'll, That's um, all right, man. I, I haven't got much uh, <laughs> to say. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy but you'll, to just um, jump in, mate. But yeah, again, like with many, like, you know, with, with I mean, Flatwoods, Mothman, you know, the big guy himself, mm. there does seem to be, um, again, this common link between UFO sightings and high strangeness oh, mate, and yeah. sightings of other cryptids, creatures, and, you know, kind of whether, whatever else. So this incident in particular kind of, you know, gives a nod to that. Mm. Um, again, I was surprised, <clears throat> but not surprised, like glass. Well, yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, it took quite a while for this to crop up in the research. So again, and this is why I didn't know that, this point what route i was kind of going to go down but then i read this and was like yeah okay <laughs> i can buy into that yeah because you know and, and i can't remember who wrote the article but you know i kind of make them right you know if if we did it you know if we sent animals into space to see if it was safe you know for us to go up there i mean yeah. they did it with um with dogs and didn't the americans do it with chimps as well yeah. i think at some point so it's yeah, been done with, with so if we're doing it to see whether space travel is safe, then if we're not alone out there, then what's to say that someone else wouldn't think of the same? Or they saw our shuttle with a couple of dogs in it and thought, well, that's a, not a bad idea. <laughs> <It's> not bad. <laughs> it's a bit primitive down right, there, but that's yeah. not a bad idea. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Let's round up a couple of them and then fire them off. <laughs> yeah, get, yeah. <laughs> Fetch the chupacabra. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, so I, I, quite, I quite like that, which is why I wanted to sort yeah. of... Um, yeah, mention it. And it kind of buys into that that theory that the local, and this was a local, what the locals thought, because they obviously got down there before the government could come yeah. and clean it up and they saw the, the, the dead bodies and stuff. And so they believed that not all of them were killed on impact and that some of them were managed, managed to escape. And and what is interesting about Puerto Rico, like the politics of it all, uh, as well, is it's, it's, um, it's a territory that is part of the US mm. and it does come underneath federal law, but the people don't get a vote on like the presidential election. No, they don't. Like this. No. So they're kind of, um, it's almost a bit like a dictatorship to a certain degree. Oh yeah. I to guess the to higher an ex- level. Yeah, I guess to an extent. Yeah. Um, so there's very much a, a big divide between the people and, and the government. So, mm. I mean, there is anyway, but it, it makes sense that the people, have their own thing going on. If you, if yeah. you understand what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. The, you know, I like the fact that they're getting out there and they're getting into these areas when they mm. see strange things going, going on, they're like, yeah, I'm getting in there and get, getting involved. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was absolutely. And, and it's funny that you should mention, uh, sort of politics because, um, the next, uh, sort of just bit, it's not really a, 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 you know, an encounter. Um, but it, it actually involves, um, the mayor of um, Canavanas, which, oh, uh, uh, which, I, know we, which um, I know we mentioned um, earlier, yeah. Yes, where she's um, His name was Kimo Soto. Um, Kimo was a nickname, which I guess in Puerto Rican means something, because he was a boxer. Oh, okay. I wish I'd <laughs> found out what it meant, but it's only just occurred to me. But yeah, Kimo was a, um, was a, was a, uh, a nickname, uh, but he was the mayor of um, Canavanas. Um, and yeah, during... 96 and of course beyond when you know the first chupacabra sightings occurred um he fully believed in the the chupacabra um although i couldn't find anything that confirmed that he physically saw one however i have been told by our listener who lived there that he did appear on tv Mm. locally um to say like he believes it because he's seen one Wow. But I couldn't find an account of that anywhere. So as far as my research goes, he never actually physically saw one himself, but he went off the back of a lot of the local uh, sightings and descriptions and stuff. You couldn't find his sighting? I couldn't find his sighting personal to him. Gotcha. Obviously, we've gone over the one in in kind of Vanas Mm. um, uh, specifically. But yeah, I I couldn't find anything on, on his one. So... There's a chance that he did actually see it himself, um, which is what kind of led his very interesting kind of mission to mm. capture one, um, which sadly he never managed to do before he passed. Um, but uh, but he he believed um, he so he tried to capture the beast as I say, and uh, but he believed it was an alien, so it wasn't of Puerto Rico, it wasn't gotcha. of Earth. Um, he. No, no doubt off the, the back of the UFO crash, he probably, he believed that it came, yeah. 
I suppose if it's happening in your back garden, so to speak, you yeah, you know, you you can have a different perspective, aren't you? A different viewpoint. Um, yeah. But he, uh, yeah, he went uh, on an inspection in the Palmer Solar uh, sector, and uh, he initially went because some goats had been killed near a banana plantation. Um, they a- arrived quickly on site. Um, and the scene he described as uh, as terrible. Um, so based on the other accounts we've gone over, you can imagine that it was probably mm. just feathers and bodies everywhere. Um, and the blood had been drained. Yeah. Um, but one thing that he did notice that hadn't hasn't really come up in, in any other sightings that I've read was that he noticed a strong smell of sulphur ah. and a general ill feeling the moment he walked on site. So sulfur and infrasound. Yep. Yeah. UFOs. Yeah. <laughs> yep. UFOs. Yep. Strange lights in the skies. Weird creatures. Had, had they been? Yep. So again, how many all points, boxes are we going to tick? I, I don't know, man. But this is another one that points firmly in uh, in in that direction. I think I might um, actually have another box to tick as well. In a, oh, perfect. In a little bit of okay. stuff that I've found. Um, the mayor insists that um, that people who have seen it. Because he said this in the article, which is why I don't think he actually saw one, but I don't know for sure. So, it, okay. you know, people can decide what they what they choose. But um, the, the mayor insists that people who had seen it describe it as a two-legged species that looks like a man from the waist down and has scaly skin from the waist up. Um, it has a full set of spikes running down its back. Mm. Um, <laughs> this, this bit I, I did find hilarious. And you, you best uh, oh, right. best yeah. get that ready, yeah. Um, <laughs> he also believes that the chupacabra kills male animals by the the neck, so the the thorax being ripped out or, or puncture wounds being in the sort of the neck area, and the, <laughs> and the females by t- <laughs> and the females by taking them by the back of the anus <laughs> and uh, making a beastly hole in them. <laughs> all, all a a, and then that was that was word for word from the from what he he said supposedly. So, hang on a second. So we're also looking at that. No, no, this is bestiality. <laughs> oh no! Sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Next no. time on Cryptid Ramblers. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. Tune in next time, yeah, kids. Tune in next time. It's for bestiality. <laughs> and next week, cannibalism. <laughs> exactly, yeah. No, no, no. Well, was, no um, again, with regards to animal mutilations, it's yeah. quite often when the uh, the genitals are balled out. Yeah. The female genitals are actually bored out. A like beastly cor- hole may be left. Cored out of the... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what's happened, yeah. Fucking well, that's another, what he believes has happened. Another yeah. box ticked. Yeah. Check. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, Mayor, um, Mayor Soto um, has noted that theorists have speculated that the creature may be the product of gene splicing, mm-hmm. um, a result of um, environmental pollution, um, which again came up in our other sort of um, bit of info, um, or... It's part of a CIA plan to destabilise the region, which could just be maybe if Puerto Rico aren't too keen on the states or if they weren't they want best friends at that point, they want independence. And so some someone's come up with that theory that it's, um, yeah, like man-made creature to destabilise Puerto Rico, weakening them to, I guess, I, make them easy pickings. That, I, that I didn't really look too much into. I wouldn't be but, surprised with the CIA, to be honest. They're mm, not exactly above I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, mm. tactics like that. Yeah. Like but, they, they, they've poisoned water and stuff like this to destabilise their own parts of their own fucking country. Yeah, exactly. So why wouldn't they do it? Um, yeah. They're disgusting. So that's one of the three, that, that's one of the three theories that he believes people mostly kind of speculate Um but he believes, however, that they are extraterrestrials who were attracted to the island by the Arecibo Observatory, um, which, as we know, put out that um, mm. that, that uh, signal, that uh, message, sorry, coded message, gotcha. which I think was later called the Arecibo message, I think. Um, but yeah, so he, he believes that they did absolutely receive a response um, and that it was by the way of these, you know, UFOs. Well, the general public aren't ever going to be told... If we do receive a message back from from outside space, you know, is like no. when 
we're not going to be told about it until they actually start landing on yeah. our doorsteps. Yeah. You know, War of the World style. Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the, the last, I mean, I would just say the last thing. Um, I was also pointed in the direction of a, lo- a local article um, from our listener who gave us the, the separate story, okay, which I can yeah. go on. Uh, a bit later, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but there I'm, was, I'm quite interested to hear about. Yeah, no, it's, story, it's actually. a good one. Um, there was a local article um, written in El Nuevo Dia or the New Day um, on July 26th, 2010. Um, the article is titled "The Chupacabra Returns." Um, following a set of recent attacks on a rabbit breeding ranch. What? <laughs> um, Situated in a remote district in um, Canavanas, um, which left only 12 rabbits dead, to be fair. Um, but it's the nature of the attacks that have allowed people to kind of reminisce about the original attacks from back in the mid-90s, gotcha. which is why they're drawing the uh, comparisons. Um, the, the rabbits were dead, but had not been moved. The white fur had been untouched, not a drop of blood um, in sight or spilt, um, but they had been drained of all blood. Get, yeah. So again, yeah. It's really weird. Very weird. Um, the farm owner, um, Moises Garcia, uh, said that he heard the cries from the rabbits, but assumed that it was two males fighting. Um, in in hindsight, he realised that it sounded like animals were being slaughtered. Um, after 12 hours, he noticed that rigor mortis hadn't set in, and in fact, the bodies were still limp as if they were alive. Um this matched findings in autopsies from the initial um, 1995 killings, mm. which is why I brought it up earlier. That's yeah. why it must have popped in me in my head. Um, based on the fur left on the cages, experts believe um, that it could actually have been monkeys, but the circumstances of the deaths of the rabbits don't match the behaviour of monkeys. Um so what, that, so what they're saying, the fur that was left on, on the cages, like... From, it, so on the outside of the... So the cages had been, like, trampled, so like, as though an animal had jumped on the, the tops of the cages by way of trying to, I suppose, dent the metal so they could get in. Yeah. So on the outside of the cage, fur had been found that didn't match, you know, sort of the rabbits. But matched monkeys. And they believed that it could have matched um, monkeys. Because there were... Because, yep, yeah, in... Yeah. Uh, I did write this really early on in my notes. So, uh, so back in the 1930s in uh, Puerto Rico, um, rhesus monkeys were brought onto the island um, for um, animal testing mm. because they're not native to that area, or they certainly weren't at the time. Um, however, several dozen managed to escape. Um, and they believe that because they were kept in cages, they were, you know, tested on, mistreated or whatever else, people believe that that would explain the aggressive nature mm. of the monkeys because obviously they're pissed off <laughs> from years yeah, of mon- testing monkeys and shit. Monkeys can be quite aggressive anyway. Yeah. Um, and also the walking on hind legs, as we know, they can walk up right. That's right. So they yeah. reckon that those two attributes could be explained, you know, by that. But it was it was rhesus monkeys and another, another type of... Um, Monkey, but like um, or something like that. Usually, the smallest. No, it was it was one that I hadn't heard of, but it would have been one of the smaller, oh, okay. smaller um, types. But so yeah, so it was back in the nineteen thirties, so quite a bit before. Um, well, obviously about forty years before the first mm. claimed sightings yeah. of what we now know as the uh, the chupacabra. But yeah, so so that that was one thing as well that they they believed it could have been, uh, you know, monkeys, but it was never um, proven. Again, much like. Most of, much like most of this, it's yeah. uh, it's all theory. Yeah. Well, it, it certainly don't sound like owls, does it? it no. <laughs> no. It most certainly does not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It most certainly does not. But um, yeah, I mean, if I, I don't know what you if you want to go into yeah I mean, your bits. I mean, I've got the listener story, but we can save that for yeah. I mean, the, the, before we get off the fence, maybe the way, the way that I the sort of research in, in the way the direction that my research took me, it didn't quite go as as, as in depth as you did. Um, cause I was, I was intending on going down the government route. Yeah. I mean, you're saying, yeah, that's what I thought or based on my initial sort of findings that yeah. oh, that seemed the most plausible sort of thing. Yeah. But as again, with, you know, as you, as you are looking into it, you, you find more and more, um, 
different avenues to go down. Mm. And I ended up going down the black magic route. So, right. and this is where I found a connection with all of these bright lights, UFO activity, yep. animal mutilations, strange cryptid creatures, weird infrasound mm. uh, feelings and such. And then also ritualistic magic. Yeah. So um, Puerto Rico and like the, the, the Latin Afro-Caribbean sort of areas have a high density of what we would call black magic cults. So okay. there's things like uh, the Santa Muerta or the, 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 the sacred death, um, voodoo, um, and other different occult rituals and, sure. and such. Yeah. Um, and I started looking at um, Nick Redfern, Nick oh, Redfern's okay. yeah. um, books and, and, and articles that he's, that he, that he's uh, published. Mm. And he has actually gone to Puerto Rico nine times in oh, wow, search right. of the Chupacabra. Um, and one of the things that he came up with was he's found a connection between um, the Chupacabra and bat-like creatures. So that is, this was one that came that up. That is interesting. It was very, very <laughs> weird. Um, and again, it's uh, El Yunque Rainforest. Yeah. Um, in 1975, um, a, a, a lady by the name of Norca had this account where she had actually painted a picture of this creature that she had, that she had seen and she gifted it to him, um, to Nick Redfern. Mm. Um, and it shows basically a giant bat, a giant yeah. bat like creature with massive hind legs. Yeah. Um, and this came at the same sort of time that these animals were being drained of blood and, mm. and, but what was also really interesting was it closely resembled yeah. accounts of both animal killings and animal sightings or creature sightings yeah. um, in Zambia, Africa. Right, okay. Um, but also these creatures have also been spotted in India. Yep, they have. Um, and all, of, all across South America as well, these giant bat-like creatures. Mm. Now, yeah. I, I, I didn't go too much into it because I thought I, I was finding that that was – diverting onto something completely different, giant bats and the, the chupacabra. I mean, obviously we've already still got two different creatures that have a completely different um, description of each other. Yeah. However, the MO is the same. This potentially could be a third one to it, which I thought was really weird. Um, right, okay. And I'm just going to read a little bit off of his um, of a Nick Redfern's article that he did for Mysterious Universe. Oh, okay, he's, he's often writing for them. Yeah, uh, he, yeah. His latest one is actually, I believe, last week about the Chupacabra. Oh wow! Right. So okay. he's um, still on it. Then. Oh yeah, he's yeah, yeah. still on it. I mean, he's got a, a book which I'm gonna. It's, it's added to my Amazon. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, it's added to the to the um, the checkout, the long list. Yeah, yeah, the shopping tr shopping bag, and oh uh, yeah. So I'm definitely yeah. gonna be getting into that. That's for sure. So he says, uh, on all my many trips to Puerto Rico, I have heard several, often repeated theories of what these beasts are or may be. The list includes alien beings, giant bats and the products of secret labs run by scientists engaged in bizarre genetic cloning and gene splicing experiments. Right. And there is one more theory, that the chupacabras were invoked or conjured by clandestine groups that engaged in the black arts and who are directly responsible for creating a portal or what we may call a supernatural doorway that lets monsters enter into our world at will. Okay, yeah. Now that kind of... I can kind of buy into that to, I can, to, I, to an extent because we it, it kind of lends itself to my theory of the of how you know like the big guy walks between dimensions and mm. travels you know b between our you know you know realm and, uh, and another one. So the fact that someone's conjured up such a portal can't be that far. Well, there afield. are there are connections that the Loch Ness monster, for instance, may have been conjured up by Alistair Crowley. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, I've read the, that. Um, yeah. I think it's the oh, I can't remember the name of the house, but um, Jimmy Page, yeah, bought it. He did. Yeah. Um, had it for twenty years. Lived in it maybe like two or three times tops. Um, but it's, it's now ruined now. But I think it's been the the subject of multiple fires. 
Yeah, I don't think it's even there anymore. I think it's actually been demolished. Trying to cleanse yeah. it, trying to cleanse yeah. the land yeah. at the very least, which, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> crack on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you do that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, he then goes on to say, there is no doubt that Puerto Rico is home to multiple cults and secret societies that engage in animal sacrifice, ritual mas- uh, magic, um, and occult practices. Mm. Um, I know that as I've had the opportunity to speak with a few of them, there are dangerous and powerful bodies, ones not to be crossed with, the most likely scenario to explain the nature and presence of the Puerto Rican chupacabra, however, mm. is that it's a shape-shifting denizen of another realm of existence. What the hell? It is a monster that, when called forth, eagerly made a new home, as well as an entirely new hunting ground on the island, and has no intention of returning to the weird realm from whence it first surfaced. Which is a very, very wow. interesting theory. Yeah. It most now, certainly is, yeah. That's something that I... <sighs> I, I, I found I found this to be a distinctive connection. So mm. another box to tick with yeah, regards definitely. to all of this weird uh, cryptid yeah. activity. Again, it's more similarities to things that we've you know we've found before. So mm. yeah, I yeah, get that absolutely. And there was um, there was the one where I, I kind of teased you with it, where the big man. <laughs> yeah, you did. You up. did. Um, well, this yeah. one, this one actually, there's two sightings by this particular person, Maria Garcia from Carolina. Okay. Puerto Rico. Oh, Puerto Rico. <laughs> God's sake. <laughs> so two occasions. 1999 was the first one. She saw a small bipedal creature skipping along. Very much matched the same sort of description as um, uh, Tolentino. Right, yeah. Um and uh, but the only difference was that it had wings as well. Yep. Which is really really weird. Yep. Um But then the second time, not so weird it. if you hear our listeners' story. But oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. It's quite oh. good you went first actually now because yeah. it, it yeah I can f- feed off of that quite nicely actually. Yeah. Well, this apparently is something that happens quite a lot as well. Um, so the second time that she saw this creature, um, she decided that she was going to uh, follow it basically, as, as mm. best as she could. That's great horror movie logic. I know, right? <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, yeah, but the black guy didn't die first in this film. Though. No, not in this one. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, luckily enough, no one died in this one. Um, but what she did see was um, a brilliant flash of light. And then moments later, she saw a large ape man appear in the tree line. And then it right. backed off into the tree line. Homer Simpson style <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Shit, I've been <laughs> That's immediately what I thought of yeah. when you said it. Yeah, Bigfoot, I could totally see it. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody moron that he is. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, so that I thought that was weird. That yeah. Well, a large ape man mm. creature was... Around the same time, around as, the same sort of time. Yeah. I mean, I don't know whether or not it was, whether or not the the, the small winged creature that she saw hopping or skipping, sorry, skipping yeah. along, was Bigfoot, mm. and then the flash of light was it then transforming into the larger form. Yeah. So did it manifest itself into Bigfoot, or did Bigfoot yeah. come along and zap it, or that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Set lasers to stun. <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah, I thought that that yeah. was that was really weird. But it's you're right. Yeah, there's world war worldwide cases of of these creatures and and sightings, winged and, creatures. Yeah, uh, but not just the winged creatures. But I'm talking about like the the high strangeness with regards to cryptid creatures and the spiritual practices. And oh man, it's taken us everywhere. Yeah, and UFO activity yeah. as well. And uh, uh, Puerto Rico in itself. The, the it's a hotbed of, for UFO, UFOs oh, and paranormal actually, and cryptids and yeah, it's a real it's uh, madness. Yeah, it's quite um, it's quite good that we've got our um, local correspondent. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. <laughs> so if we come across anything like this again, we can just yeah. uh, we'll tap them up. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, 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 was, I was really quite surprised at the the prominence of these spiritual religious activities that they got yeah. over there. Like, I didn't come across that interestingly, but. I mean, my research took me down a certain way and then obviously from those conspiracy theories, it obviously mm. took me down a different route. But I, I didn't... The only thing I saw regarding have, black magic like- was that there was an account from someone who's a, a local 
uh, might have been like a journalist or someone um, that went for an investigation. Uh, it took them through, might have been, might have been through um, El Yunga, um, and they they came to a, a, a creek bed or, or or a creek, and along the edge of of, of of said creek, they found what looked like to them as a sacrificial altar, mm. which was splattered in in blood with um, chickens. Yeah. You know, strewn across the floor, kind of around sounds, it. Sounds very voodoo. But that was the only yeah, thing I found. There was there was no no other sort of substance to it, which is why I didn't. Well, there, there's go into of, it too much. There's a lot of Latin Afro culture there. Um, so the idea that voodoo and black magic in general is mm. again, it makes sense that it's there. I mean, I came across things like there was like the Black Magic Institute. And, and stuff that's right. actually in Puerto Rico where, I mean, some of it, I did have a look at the websites. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> there's some of them that are absolutely hilarious, like the, the symptoms of, of black magic, um, right. that, that someone might have put a black magic curse on you. So if there's even people offering is black magic Is it a bit like Mrs. Curses, Boucher? That, is, it a bit, is it a bit like that? <laughs> Everything's the bit, devil. Well, <laughs> a little bit. I mean, I, I did come up with, I did find four that I thought was quite hilarious. Right, okay. And so what are these? These are symptoms of practicing black magic. These are, are symptoms or? that you are the victim of black magic. Right. Okay. So, um, I've got four, which I, uh, right. and I could have got like 40. Right. Okay. But the got women, them. we, uh, women get periods before the time or periods are blocked. Right. <laughs> black magic causes prostitution. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so th- this seems very directed at women as well. This is quite quite interesting. She right. hates men, and she does not like getting close to them. Right. Um, but so f- also, compelling a man to be gay. Um, compelling a man. To- he does right, not get okay. physically involved with women because he becomes useless. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> this is like uh, part of me is like. Some of these websites, mate, seriously, get, guys, <laughs> Google Black Magic Puerto Rico and you're going to come across some I've fantastic not even heard of it being websites. prominent there, but I'll, I'll give it a There's one give guy, it a search. There's one guy, I forget what his name, but he's, he's an Indian fella. Right. And he looks like some sort of bubba. Um, and uh, he's got a very... Um, Careful. Interesting, <laughs> a very interesting website. Uh, right, okay. Is uh, yeah, he, he can he can produce spells and incantations can. to disperse What's black the least, magic for you. The least you'd expect from someone that can practice magic, they must be able to do spells of some sort. You'd imagine, but yeah, uh, you know, all, all joking aside, it's a very strong part of the culture there. Um, you've right. got like the white magic and the black magic is not necessarily one being evil and one not yeah. being evil, but it's um, it's where how this goes, doesn't it? The, the the sort of the research and, and you know kind of what we look into because with the relatively extensive research that, that even I did, I, not once did anything like that come up. Like any mm. aside from one comment about someone that saw something down by a creek, but aside from that, yeah, like just mentioned, yeah. Aside from that, I, I didn't see anything about any theory about it being that sort of practice or mm. I mean I think right at the beginning actually I hit it off and said that uh, that some some locals believe that it was uh, part of a, a satanic cult um, yeah when, when they when it first started in Mocha yeah but um, the thing is but whenever they say satanic they mean anything could be other anything than Catholicism or Christianity yeah I guess so really because yeah, anything anything else is the devil you know and <laughs> yeah. it's yeah, you know, yeah, it's interesting that man. Yeah, I'd, mm. I'd, like I said, I mean, that's why I like that we go off on these tangents individually and then come back to the yeah table, I, throw it all in the melting pot, and I, inevitably we'll come up acro- across something that I'm the other in, one didn't. I'm inclined to so. believe like the 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 idea of ritualistic magic um, and its, it's power <laughs> and, and such. You know that I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I have experienced it to a, to a certain degree. Yeah. We but, live with a practicing witch. Well, there, so, is that. Uh, <laughs> there is that. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, yeah. I think that, that when when you can when you take all of it together and you start ticking all these boxes a lot, very much along the same sort of lines as the criteria for the missing four one one. So yes, when you start ticking all of these various different boxes, yeah. it stops becoming coincidence, and it's yeah, exactly. And we don't like coincidence, do we? We don't like coincidences. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you tick. You, if you tick enough boxes, it gets to the point where 
yeah, you, you, it's it's it becomes undeniable, or yeah. as you say, it's it's not just circumstance, it's not just you know coincidence or whatever, you know, and especially when those boxes are ticked for you know, many different cryptids, which come with completely different descriptions in different parts of the world from, you know, hundreds of years ago to two years ago, or, you know, you can't have that many, you know, that many sort of variations for it to just Mm. be coincidence. Absolutely. Or or whatever. So, yeah, but uh, but that was an interesting one though, man. Yeah, I like that. I'm interested to hear Mm. what our listener has to say what our well, listener's story. you will like it, especially yeah. following... I mean, Ooh. there's no black magic, but okay. more the the winged uh, creature, cool. shall we say. Yeah, go for it. Um, so, yeah, as I say, this uh, this story is, is coming from a, a, a keen uh, listener uh, and previous contributor um, of the podcast, so thank you again. Um, but they have, again, asked to remain anonymous. Fair enough. Um, uh, so it involves um, this person's uh, great-uncle, and they've wanted to make clear that, you know, he was a, a professional. He, he was a, an insurance agent, much like myself. Okay, good. <laughs> um, and an entrepreneur, uh, including a, a restaurant that he had sort of for many years. Um, so held in high esteem, basically. He's, yeah. you know, he's not some kook or whatever. So that they wanted to make that, that clear. Um, in his older years, he lived by himself following a number of, you know, sort of divorces, children growing up and fleeing the nest and, and whatnot. Um, uh, and so he bought himself a, a house um, out in the country in a town called um, Ciales, um, Puerto Rico. Uh, he did have a big dog. Um, the specific breed is is unknown um, sort of at this point, mm. um, but it was believed to be sort of Labrador sort of size. Oh, okay. Like German yeah. Shepherd, Lab- Labrador type uh, type size. Um, uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, he was, so he was returning home um, from uh, the, the the supermarket. Um, it was around five to seven o'clock at night. Um, so, but this was obviously, this is like in the Caribbean. So it's still very much kind of daylight. It hadn't mm. really started to get dusk yet. Um, he, so he's in his car, he's pulling up to, you know, to his house and his dog um, was believed to be outside the house. Um, there was a little bit of, you know, we weren't too sure because this, this obviously happened oh, what, 25 years ago. Gotcha. So we weren't sure whether the, the dog was already outside the house or whether the gentleman had gone in to the, the house mm-hmm. and then and then let, the, and dog then let the dog out gotcha. sort of thing. Yeah, so th- th- that is sort of unclear, but inconsequential really in the, in the grand scheme of things, but just wanted to kind of mention that. But um, he basically sees uh, a creature lurching over the dog um, on, or presumably on the, the sort of the front yard. Um, so he, he's kind of driving onto his land, presumably the driveway. He sees this all kind of happening in front of him. He parks his car. Uh, he, he runs inside, grabs a firearm, um, which we, uh, which is believed it was a, a rifle um or a, or it could have been a pistol mm-hmm. um he comes back out now armed the creature spots him um he obviously spots the creature being you know closer up still lurching over you know the dog uh, and you notice that it had um red eyes when it looked right. at him very prominent bright red eyes um the uncle points the weapon at the creature but doesn't fire Upon seeing the the uncle do this, the creature grabs the dog with its claws and disappears up into a, a nearby tree. That's a big dog as well. If it's like Labrador, that's a big old German, dog, German <laughs> yeah. Shepherd size. That's a big old dog. Um, and they he re- recounted that it jumped from the ground into the tree with the dog in its grasp. Um, and the animal um, shrieked quite loudly whilst uh, whilst doing so. Whoa! Now, wherever the creature was, um, it it had to be big to be able to lift a fairly large dog, seemingly with ease. Um, now, as I referred to earlier, some witnesses in um, other unrelated cases of uh, chupacabra stated that it, it could st- it stood at five feet uh, tall so it's possible if it was more t- towards that kind of height and build that it could easily have done yeah. that with a dog of of that uh, 
you know, of that uh, size. If we're certainly basing it off of regular physics, that is. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, even regular physics, that kind of makes sense. So if this is likely to be irregular, mm. it's even more likely, I guess, to, to make sense yeah. in, in that respect. Um, so after a while, the creature disappears from the tree with the dog. Um, now, it's unclear whether it leapt from the tree and, and sort of ran off with the, the, the dog or whether it flew away. Um, but the uncle, either way, never saw his dog again. Um, now, he didn't fire the weapon. He only aimed it at the creature. And I think, you know, in fairness to him, he was probably too terrified to react, as you would expect, yeah. after what he'd just, uh, you know, seen. So, like I say, this occurred in uh, sort of between 96 and 97. So it was, at, it was relatively at the heart of the phenomena. Um, and only a year or so, roughly after the first reported official sighting yeah. of the chupacabra so so that's the reason why he always felt it was a chupacabra because the appearance kind of matched what had been reported yeah and it was also the only thing that could be explained so there was nothing else really at the time well this to really kind of to of kind of label it that was going on yeah, well, yeah, yeah exactly so, i mean that's pretty fucking strange and it, <laughs> yeah just a bit and this was um yeah, and this was at the 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 heart of it. So, in in summary, this is how he described the the creature to his family, which includes our our listener. Um, it was roughly five feet in height. It had red eyes, a curved back, and something that resembled wings, uh, with an an impressive wingspan and large clawed feet. Now, this obviously feeds off from what you were saying about yeah. the winged creature and stuff. The, the family actually believed that what he might have seen was in fact a gargoyle. Gotcha. Um, which I'll be perfectly honest, <laughs> until they mentioned this, I didn't even know gargoyles were a thing well, outside of like Disney cartoons or well, this the is actual a, cartoon gargoyles. Yeah, well, you know, I, I didn't actually think that they were believed to be an existing, you know, creature that's that's something that, uh, that actually comes up because when people think of gargoyles they think of those things that are on the side of churches and yeah exactly and the stone uh, sort of figures but they're yeah. actually called grotesques that's right, what they're okay. called so they're, they're we call them gargoyles but they're not they're grotesques right. and gotcha so gargoyles so i didn't even know that yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go so yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. yeah i guess yeah, yeah. so th- yeah and, and 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 gargoyles um are seen a lot around uh Puerto Rico, and the presence of um, you know the the the, the presence of, of wings, um, or or something that would resemble a, a sort of a wingspan of sorts, mm. um, like maybe like a webbing under its you know arms yeah. or or something. Um, that, that, that that's really the the kind of the only difference really between the the kind of you know the reptilian description of a, a chupacabra. And what you know, this person's um, uncle saw. Um, so at the time, I've wrote a note here that at the time it was it was sort of unconfirmed, but I just since had um, you know an update on the uh, on the the sequence of of events. Um, and yeah, and uh, it, it was confirmed that it did have you know sort of wings. So he, he believed that it was a, a chupacabra because that's all he knew that it would be referred to as mm. there's no other, you know, kind of name for it necessarily. Um, but in later years, as it's transpired, it was actually potentially wow. a, a, a gargoyle, which is basically like a winged a chupacabra. chupacabra, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. From, you know, wow. from his, um, you know, quite compelling description. I mean, to get the height, the size, <laughs> you know, physical descriptions, you know, color of the eyes, the feet, you know, and it must have been some whopper of a bloody this is creature to this pick is, up a sodden Labrador yeah, or, I mean, or dog of that size, at least. I mean, I find it absolutely incredible that we've just been able to to find so many different descriptions of this this creature yeah. that 
I don't. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think <laughs> about this. I mean, yeah. I guess. I guess uh, is, unless you've got anything else. No, no, that was it. But no, I just. Um, I suppose just before we jump off the fence, just to, I just want to thank the you know the listener again yeah. for you know providing us with um, you know with that story uh, and and also to their family because you know mum dad you know brother all yeah. got involved with helping to kind of recount you know the the story and the series of events that you know that I've just. Um, Oh, you excellent. know, kind thank of um, read out. So yeah, so thank you, uh, yeah, thank you very much for that. But yeah, that that kind of threw a spanner in the works, really, for me in terms of um, so in, te- in terms of what side of the fence I was going to oh, okay. kind of land on. I thought I was maybe going to go, you know, a, a certain you know a certain way with it, um, but. But now I think that way, okay, <laughs> that, way, that way has changed. Yeah. Um, um, did did I- you want to? Yeah, I'll, Did you I'll, want to I'll go, go first? I'll go for it. Yeah, um, I I will say the same thing. I I thought that my um, thing was going to take me down the government animal testing route, mm. um, gene splicing and, and the such, yeah. and, and everything else like that. That an experiment gone wrong, and an mm. experiment um, that that has escaped um, simply because of it has happened before. Like I mentioned with the the African killer bees. Yeah, um, and. When, because I, I didn't really, again, I didn't get as much of a, a chance to get my teeth sunk into this mm. as much as you did. No pun intended. No, no pun intended, <laughs> um, but graciously accepted. Um, <laughs> graciously accepted. It's, um, oh, I can't get over the fact that all these boxes keep getting ticked. I can't yes. get over that. I, uh, you know, there's, there's this weird stuff that keeps happening all over the place that, is linking UFO activity, cryptid activity, animal mutilations, and blood mm. draining as well. Yeah, because that is also part of the the mutilations. Um, bright lights in the sky, mm. people experiencing strange infrasound. Yeah, and also this ritualistic ma- magic as well. It, yeah, it's it, like what. <laughs> What is this? What is going on? Yeah, like, it's, yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so much as you say, really, you know, with the, it, it ticks all the, the boxes with, you know, the, the fast travel, the, you know, the mutilations, the red eyes, the, you know, kind of the wings, the stature, um, you know, how it pops up in, you know, different regions. I, I'm, I'm likely to, I'm probably going to coin this under the same theory, um, you know, as the big man and, whatever and that it's you know it's interdimensional it's you know yeah. it's not off this world um you know whether it came here of its own accord um i'm probably more likely to go down you know that route so you know it came either f- through a portal or maybe ufos you know mm. sort of brought it here and, and that's how it's kind of integrated itself i didn't find anything on black magic and also have not you know kind of heard of it up until you presented it so i, I can't kind of pin anything on on that mm. personally um but yeah i think that's kind of yeah i think that's kind of where i would land that it, it i mean we know that the chupacabra exists because people have shot and killed an unidentified creature mm. that has you know confused scientists it's gone through dna testing without any kind of trace to anything known on this you know sort of planet so i suppose off the bat yeah the chupacabra has as it's been presented, exists. Yeah, I've seen videos. We've you know we've we've seen videos, photos, yep. and what you know whatever else. Um, you know we've you know uh, as well as the other accounts. You know we've now got a sort of personal account. You mm. know from you know from someone that we know. So that kind of that definitely adds credence and and, and weight to it. But um, yeah, I, I I think it probably travels much the same as you know sort of the big guy and some of the others that it's into dimensional or. or from the belly of hell, probably looking at the bloody <laughs> sight of the bloody thing. Yeah. Um, but the interesting thing as well, when it only came up really when this, um, the, you know, the, the winged creature got kind of thrown into the mix mm. and the whole, you know, gargoyle thing. Is it to me, to an extent, it, it screams Mothman. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially, you know, if, if people said that it looks like a man from the waist down, so it's got the, you know, the big legs that we know from, you know, sort of mothman it's winged red eyes you know it brings about disaster whether that's the animal 
killings and the, the sacrifices or yeah i mean i suppose the, other, the, the main thing with, other with things Mothman was that there was no actual um attacks or anything like that i mean it, it there was um a few occasions right. when it chased people chase people yeah um although but the killings could dog. be the the, the dog that the disappeared dog, the dog yeah. that disappeared the german shepherd that disappeared yeah. and then they found its carcass later on yeah um yeah, I mean, this chap never found his dog again, but presumably the same sort of thing, you know, could have happened. So is Gargoyle, Mothman, are they, you know, kind of... Is that something? Are they one of the same, you know, potentially? That might be one to look into. It all kind of, it all kind of adds up, doesn't it, really, mm. with the description. I mean, minus the killings, or, you know, but bringing about disaster. You know, Mothman did it in West Virginia in a different way with the Silver Bridge collapse. You know, has this version done it differently in... Um, you know, Puerto Rico by affecting the, f- uh, the uh, like the agriculture, the yeah. the, the, the farm your livestock. animals, livestock. That's the word. Yeah. You can see me struggling. Yeah, can you? Can see, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the smoke coming out my ears. <laughs> the um, yeah, it, that version could be you know the the sort of the agriculture, the livestock, you mm. know that kind of thing. So although he, he, Mothman didn't directly kill anyone, did he, it's believed that he brought about disaster which led to led to the you know deaths and stuff so you know again there's a lot of you know kind of similarities there so mm. again with all these similarities and uh, it's just too coincidental for it to you might be onto something there yeah. i think it might be, i think it'd be worth us looking into into gargoyles as well like seeing what the oh, worldwide so, yeah. legends are with regards oh to yeah them. exactly yeah and seeing whether or not they match up and i'm yeah i'm gonna you know i'm gonna, make, I'm gonna place a bet now i'm gonna say yeah they match up yeah I, I know, think they, something happens I here. Think it all I think from to, what we've sorry, man, go on. Yeah, sorry. I, I think it's everything's going to match up. We're going to be yes. ticking more and more of these boxes. We may even start finding new start ones, finding new boxes <laughs> to tick yeah. as well. Yeah. But as for the the mainland chupacabra, mm. I think that is more likely to have been the hybridization of one or two, maybe three creatures that are yeah. of the same sort of. Like ilk, so three different types of canine, two different types of canine that we yeah. haven't been able to genetically map yet. Yeah, true. Potentially, yeah. again, could be a. That, I mean, that, that could be the, the uh, more so the Texan, mm. yeah, main, uh, mainland um, chupacabra. As you say, I think that could certainly lend itself to, you know, t- sort of to that. But um, the Puerto Rican one has a lot more in the way of high strangeness. Oh, it's got a lot more to it. A lot more to it and yeah a lot more high strangeness you know a lot more kind of you know theories the descriptions are what i would expect more a cryptid to be mm. um you know the, the red eyes for one that, yep. that crop up that, again mothman bigfoot to name two yep with the red eyes um the way it travels yeah it, there's just there's far more to the puerto rican one uh, also because it's more of a hotbed Mm. that particular area with the you know the mountain range the ufo you know sort of sightings paranormal um activity yeah uh you know it's all there so the the main criteria is is kind of checked off you know which is why it was surprising actually that the goggle thing didn't crop up you know sooner yeah you know for me it was only when i was kind of pointed in that direction i thought oh yeah shit but the thing is maybe sense maybe it was though maybe it was just there and it just hadn't clicked yeah possibly which which does happen was yeah i guess it was wasn't it but yeah it just didn't yeah, it didn't click maybe until someone was sort of like put it on a plate. You go, here you go. Well, I suppose it makes it it makes it better for us that we're doing this as a duo, so that because yes, exactly, yeah, I might have the same idea in my head, but it hasn't quite clicked yet until you say something. Yeah, and then they go, well, shit. Yeah, well, there you go. like what, like when you read out well, yeah. the black magic thing and the winged creature that had been seen a number of times. That's why I instantly I was like, oh, I'm glad you went first because mm. have I got a story for you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, I also like the idea that um, that. The, the chupacabra as a, as a creature might have been seeded onto mm. um, onto Puerto Rico f- mm. from ETs because the idea yeah. of ETs gene splicing and, and stuff and creating yeah. creatures is not new. It's not new. No, definitely not. I mean, that, that's no. what some ancient cultures believe we are, that yeah. we were genetically spliced and created by Our DNA ETs, was adapted, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, to cultures of the Sumerians and then I forget the name of the culture but it's um, a South African tribe mm. they have exactly the same story as the Sumerians yeah that we were created from um, apes yeah gene spliced by it like with these ETs and so the genetic ape DNA yeah make, make up of these ETs and these ape DNA mm. to create humans kind of what in we order are. to yeah. as, a, as a workforce yeah. sort of thing yeah as a slave race created to be slaves yeah um, which 
Which is another episode. Which is another episode. <laughs> we won't get into that yet. <laughs> no. Certainly not. But no. the idea of that yeah, being gene splicing, splicing thing, yeah. and stuff like that, which might also answer the animal mutilations. So the reason yeah. for taking all of this, the, the, the material, the, the the organs, the 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 various different parts of, of the creature might actually be an answer for the gene splicing that's that might be happening off world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. As to yeah. which one I believe is happening, I'm not sure. I'm mm. not going to... Th- I think if, if go back a couple of months or something like that, maybe a, mm. a year or so ago, I probably would have had a hill to die on on it right. and would have gone, yeah, it's, it's all this, this it's all yeah, that. Yeah. You know, there, there are nuts and bolts, yeah. blood and guts, uh, yeah. aliens out there that are visiting the earth and everything. And the more I've looked into it, more I've looked into the... the the magic side of it, yeah. Um, the the ritualistic magic, esoteric esoteric magic, occult mm. magic. Yeah, okay. There's something to that as well. Yeah, you know, there's a. I think that in itself could be an episode. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Itself, Quite just possibly, looking at yeah. the esoteric magic and yeah. numerology and all that sort of stuff. It might be a bit. God, yeah. Might be a bit dry. Be academic that one, but yeah, academic. We, we certainly could do. Yeah, I but, mean, yeah. I'd, like I said, I didn't come across any of the 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 magic stuff. So I, I can't at this point, you know, lend my, you know, sort of theory, you know, to that or, mm. or put it in that sort of, um, you know, direction based on what I know and what I've kind of read and the, you know, the similarities, the, the, the one that I would, you know, kind of put my finger on is the, yeah, is the, the portal interdimensional, um, you know, sort of travel that, you know, and was it, you know, kind of summoned by something like what you're suggesting or, you know, was a portal opened and they were one of the many things that, you know, that came through it. They walked through, yeah. But with, you know, Puerto Rico and the, you know, the paranormal activity, the UFOs and and the high strangeness in general, and it being to such a high level, I think that's why I kind of would point my theory in more that direction. Um, I guess we're going to have to book tickets to Puerto Rico. At then, this mate. point. Absolutely. Yeah. Add that to the list as well. <laughs> going monster hunting, honestly. Go, going monster hunting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, I mean, if, if, you know, if Discovery or if Amazon pick, pick this up and <laughs> want to send two English plebs around the world yeah. looking for cryptids, Excellent. I, I know a couple of guys. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like idiots abroad. Idi- idiots abroad, yeah. yeah. Imbeciles abor- abroad. Yeah. Yeah. Two- <laughs> yeah. English plebs abroad. <laughs> exactly. What's these two knobheads so, jumping around in fields looking for stuff? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, so, yeah, so that's where I'd, I'd kind of... That's what it's I'd throw my cap on, uh, you know, certainly at the moment, just based on if, what I've found specifically and, and kind of what we've discovered in, you know, in other episodes. It's, it seems to be the most likely at this point and, mm. until something else gets kind of thrown up. So, yeah, so I think, again, we're on the same side of the fence, but just different <laughs> different directions. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I think you're right, yeah. He's, yeah. Um, I think, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know what to think of it. Mm. I just don't, I, I just know that there's a connection with all of it, but I just can't yeah. pinpoint it quite, quite yet. I think we need yeah. to find a few more boxes. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're right. And then maybe in the next couple of um, episodes, we'll find those. And, you know, and as we alluded to, we might even find some new ones, which might even put us both in a different direction. But yeah, that's that's kind of where I land at the moment. Yeah. yeah. But until then, until then, you. yeah. Until then, thank <laughs> you very much, everyone. Yeah, for thank tuning you. Tuning in, listening, and watching our uh, guys on the uh, on the Patreon yeah. over there. Um, don't don't forget to come check us out on the uh, on the socials. Come yes. have a look on our Facebook. Um, a big thank you, in fact, to our listeners and our Absolutely. followers on, on Facebook yeah. because I put a little message out the other night saying how close we were to hitting the 100 likes mark and yeah. within an hour... We hit it. We hit it. So, yeah. so thank you. Thank you. You know, we really do appreciate yeah. that. I know it's, it doesn't... We're just two, like you say, two plebs on with microphones. <laughs> yeah. But that actually means a lot that we've it reached does. a mile a milestone that of hundred. That many people, and also, and as, as you said as well, with the with the episode, you know, not even a week, or by this point now, by the time we finish the recording, we're now just literally just over a week from the last episode, um, you know, dropping, and we've already surpassed our you know modest target of yeah, you know, 50, 50 plays, you know, per episode. I think the last time I checked, we were on. You know, sort of 55. So, mm. you know, again, you know, 
not much or you know sort of modest for some but you know big deal to us so yeah. you know scott rightly says you know thank you to everyone who's liking and, and listening and you know subscribing i've noticed the youtube channel has gone up by a couple of um a couple more yeah. uh, subscribers as well I so think we're sitting around about 70 on, on yeah. that at the moment yeah um but again but i think what and i think the point you were going to make is you know where are you all? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was come and get say, in touch. The, you know. best, the best way you guys can support us is by um, it's by liking and commenting on on the things that we put out there, sharing, um, commenting, liking, subscribing. Yeah, yeah stuff yeah. that a lot of us do as a second reflex or you know natural reaction, you know, kind of anyway. But yeah, yeah. just, just that tap that little out. like button yeah. for us sometimes, and then it does. It really does help us out. It uh, it allows it us to well, it keeps the lights on in here. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it keeps, keeps us it, coming back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we do. We very much enjoy it, and and yeah, it, that, that's really the main thing for us is that we actually enjoy doing this, and the fact that you guys enjoy listening to us is a big plus for us. Makes it worthwhile, um, and things like you know, the, with the listener's story, you know, on on this one, and and you know, countless others that we've had, you know, questions from, you know, our our patrons. It all goes towards you know why we want to do this and why we continue to do this. So. Get in touch, even if it's just to give some feedback, give an opinion, ask us a question, give us a subject matter to look into, yeah. a, a theory, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, you know, we've got the social. We're on the on on Twitter, Instagram, you know, Facebook. We've got the YouTube channel as well, all under the same handle at Cryptid Ramblers Podcast. That's the one. Um, so, yeah, that's like I said, it's the 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 easiest, quickest way to support your favourite podcast yeah, but you know absolutely. as long as uh, if you do want to we do have the Patreon that you described yes, earlier with that do. two tiers that we've got going on mm. and uh, again a big thank you to James thank Justin you. and Monika yep, thank, thank you. you very much for your continued support absolutely. and another thank you to Hellfire Creative for yep. keeping the doors open keeping the lights on and the microphones <laughs> <Yeah>. connected <laughs> yeah. and uh, and don't forget to take advantage of the um Check out code Cryptid yep. and to get your 20% off. Absolutely. Um, but also, guys, go and check out our merch store. Buy that merch.co.uk mm. forward slash yep. Cryptid Ramblers. Um, so go and check that out. Callum is wonderfully modelling the shaved monkey range. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> and um, one of my favourites. I've got my Rage and Gorgon on order. Perfect. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> and the t shirt. <laughs> and the t shirt as well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah guys go and check that out do a like a share yeah um, and uh, keep coming back for some more please do box ticking yeah nothing else least. keep listening <laughs> but and uh, so it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from me and remember encuentra esos monstruos <laughs> que <laughs> I don't speak French <laughs> <laughs> goodbye <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't mean to fight those monsters, by the way. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> I did work out.